Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hex to Hex channel with Jeff from Hex to Hex. Word up. It's damn Tim. Well, damn, damn, damn Tim. <laughs> hey, we've been spending the last 15 minutes trying to find the game on Vassal. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is going to go great. <laughs> this is going to go great. Um... Oh, yeah, so we need to make a save file here. You do all that stuff. Jeez, so bossy. Everyone, he's been very bossy because he was terrible at golf today, so he wants to try to show what it what he's worth. Sorry, I shouldn't have <laughs> bragged about your bad game. I apologize. It's a, oh, buddy has Let's, a bad day. Some have two. John Haley won't be joining us one because it's too um, too late in uh, Ireland and two he doesn't care about the. I didn't know he was in Ireland. ACW. Yeah, he told me that today because he was like, "Ah, oh, finally have a good time." So then I just asked him, "Where are you?" Hmm. So it's enough of that. It's, look, it's Charles. Chucky. Yes, yes, Charles. It is American Civil War, very yeah. beginning. This looks more like the first bull run. Yes, as Jeff said earlier, we were uh, <laughs> trying to find the right uh, scenario pack. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Richard Kerr, hello. Hey, what's up, Richard? Got All right, we want to know what state everybody is in in chat. Yeah. You have to tell us the town, just the state. I'm in Missouri. West, my God. Jeff's in, <clears throat> Jeff's in Best Virginia. And Anthony Kiner. Hey, what's up, Tony? Keep the video going after you finish the session. <laughs> South Carolina. When you invite me down there to play golf. That's all he asks. Is that why you wanted them to answer that question so you know where to go golfing? Yeah. Rude. Uh, Tony should invite me out to play Firestone. Oh, we do a big, our work does a big thing out at Firestone. In Ohio? Every year. Firestone every year. Club? I don't ever, I don't get invited. I'm not important enough. You should get me out there. I'll tell them. Uh, yeah. My my video gaming buddy uh, would like to go to the game. Firestone Country Club. All right. Let's make sure we keep the video going after you finish the session. What do you mean by that, Tony? I don't get it. Yeah, I'm lost, Tony. There's something you know that we don't. Yeah, what's going on? Did I do something? Okay. Um, all right, everybody. So we are on scenario four. It's been about 27 years since Jeff and I played last. So it'll be like we're starting all over again. But we'll do great. Won't we, won't we Jeff? Mar marvelous. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, we just had a little bit of a gap there. We got a little distracted. I'm going to have to figure... I'm going to have to... <laughs> solve that later a little conversation i have to have with somebody um and i need to put my glasses on so scenario four i think is a little bit more bull run first bull run we played like little elements of it right jeff we're kind of leading up to it i think yep yep exactly and little elements of it um oh yeah 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 oh how crazy it was after you finished the session oh 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 tony tony He's talking about how crazy we get. Yes. All right. We'll keep the video going and we'll turn on the cameras. Australia, doggone. Peter. What's up? All right. This is great. Thank you all for joining. Let us know what you're doing. If you're just watching us or playing a game or cutting counters or painting minis or. Dude, I got news for you. This is like a, this is like a brigade level civil war game uh, of the battle of bull run. Cause everybody is in their appropriate positions. As okay. okay, so this is it. This is a this, this is the real thing. We're not messing around anymore. Yeah. Okay. So basically, everybody, we're gonna I, I, tonight might be a lot more discussion about getting the special rules understood and all that. We we really want to try to get some turns in, but we're gonna uh, we're not turns, but um, activations. 
But so let's everyone join us on page 10 of your Stonewall Jackson's Way 2 Battles of Bull Run book. And would you please read from paragraph one? Yes. No. <laughs> At 2.30 a.m. Can you play the um, the, the fiddle while I re read? How about if I did it? No. At 2.30 a.m. July 21st. I'm not going to read all that. So why not? Okay. 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 Here read we go. It. It's only a paragraph. <clears throat> At 2.30 a.m. July 21st, 1861. A Union column of three divisions began to flank march around the Confederate left. Crossing at Sudley Ford, they were delayed by Evans. Then Johnston's brigades, who had mostly arrived the previous day, shifted over to stop a disjointed Union attack, culminating with Jackson's quote-unquote stonewall defense. Constantly arriving Confederate reinforcements turned the tide, and the defeated Union troops went back to the, back the way they came. A retreat turned into a rout, and the Confederates gained a decisive victory. There were 2,708 Union to 1,897 Confederate aggregate losses, and the Union only controlled Centerville. Uh, yeah, we only controlled Centerville in one of our battles. We're using the Stonewall Jackson's Way North map. Game length is, game length is one turn. July 21st, 1861. Okay. But there's a lot more units on the team. Um, now, special rules. Uh, special rules. Leader transfer phase. The Confederate player may not make any leader transfers in the initial leader transfer phase that starts the game. Right. Okay. So that's so. So, so I'm sorry, but remind me, leader transfer is just moving a leader, right? It, yeah, pick up a leader and move him somewhere. And so, yeah, we can't do that. Okay, no problem. Union Night March. Now, we have not done this yet. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. The scenario starts with an automatic Union Night March per AGA Advanced Game Rule 11.2. All Union units in this scenario are part of the Union Potomac Army, reference rule 10.2. So the Union player gets three free initiatives per the restrictions of rule 11.2. All right, well, let's just read these one at a time so we can understand this. So this is the first time we've done this night march business. Right. So, and you said you're reading about it now. So let me. Yep. Is this in the general rules or in the Stonewall Jackson's Way book? Here? The night march is in the advanced rules of all green alike. Yes, and while this is SJW2, it is the all green alike scenarios. Right. So all green alike was a independent game initially, right? Uh, or no? no? It was no, but the Stonewall Jackson games there was like a four or five of them in the original system. I got you. Okay, okay. All right, so we're looking on uh, game rule eleven point two. Right. So initiative is determined normally, and the player who had the night march is free to move any unit he could normally move if he wins the initiative. The following restrictions apply during these free initiatives. There's no dice roll. Only an active, only an activate leader action may be performed. You cannot do single units. No unit may move twice. Uh, no unit which moves in the first initiative may move in the second or third. Okay. Wow. Note, any leader may be used in more than one initiative, provided that he activates different units during each initiative. Okay, so so there's not going to be any, like if we activated uh, miles to move the units underneath him, if those units move during the night march, they, they do not get to, like if they win the initiative again, those units do not get to move again. Okay, but so like Miles, what's Miles got in there? He's got um, <clears throat> Davis and Blanker. So let's say you activated Miles and Davies moved. And uh, once Davies is done, he can't move again. But Miles could be activated again and move Blanker. Stacking, what's up, buddy? And we got a lot of people coming in stacking them. Okay. Thanks, thanks everybody for jumping on. I appreciate this. Loving people already, man. We better get going here. Um, so the Yanks get three 
free initiatives, I think. Yep. That's what it said. Starts with automatic Union Night March. It says the Union Potomac Army. Potomac. Potomac. Why am I having such a hard time saying Potomac? Potomac. How do you say it? Potomac. Potomac. I, that's what it is. Potomac. Well, we got schools around here that are spelt this, well with a K at the end, and they're called Potomac. Whoa. And oh. is it supposed to be the same thing? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. The, Pot the Potomac were Indians, I think. Oh, I got you. Okay. Oh, Native that's probably where Potomac comes from. And they, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm okay. So I want to look up on 10.2. It says armies. Yeah. But we don't have to worry about it for the union because they're all part of the army of the Potomac or the Potomac army. Oh, it's the Confederates that have the different ones, Shenandoah and, um, they have their own Potomac. So the, Oh, that's where Beauregard says P and yeah. Johnston is S. Yep. And then McDowell is V for Virginia. It, but is that the Potomac? Yeah, but it says here they're all, in 10.2, it says they are all other units. Oh. Oh, that seems to only apply to the Confederates, it looks like. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So all Union are under one army. So it says you may attempt a night march. A night march may be attempted by an army. Right. Wait a minute, say that again? Well, that's 11.1. .1. I guess we're not supposed to read that. No, really. we're, we're skipping over that. It says okay. start with two. So Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. All right. So, hey, so everybody, you get to see how Jeff and I learned this and how yeah. confused it I works. Was. It works for us. So, yep. No unit may attack. Although units may move into one enemy zone of control, cavalry units may not perform cavalry retreats. Oh, this is this has got to be apl applicable to night phases. Only one enemy zone of control may be entered, although the hex may be in the zone of control of enemy units in multiple hexes. After one unit has moved into the enemy unit zone of control, other units may not move into any other enemy zone of control including other zones of control of the same enemy unit or other enemies of control, which had already been occupied. Wow. <laughs> However, other units moving during the night march in the current or any following initiatives of it are free to move into the one zone of control, which has just been occupied. Wow. So let's read that one more time. Only one enemy zone of control may be entered. Although this hex may be in the zone of control of enemy units in multiple hexes. After one unit has moved into an enemy unit's zone of control, other units may not move into any other enemy zone of control, including other zones of control of the same enemy unit or other enemy zones of control, which it had, had already been occupied. However, other units moving during the night march in the current or any following initiatives of it are free to move into the zone of into the one zone of control which has just been occupied. Interesting. That was confusing. <laughs> it was confusing. By the way, Perry hopes to learn something from us tonight. Good luck with that one. Richard, what's up, man? Um, Fortuna. Only one enemy zone of control may be entered. All right. After one the unit. player's army automatically wins the first initiative die rolls of the current turn. Only only units from this army may move during the, these free initiatives. If the you know, and the union doesn't have to use all of them. If the Union Potomac and so it pretty much sounds to me like the first three moves of the game are Union night marches. Right. Okay. Okay, so if the Union Potomac Army performs a night march, it gets three free initiatives. <clears throat> All other armies from both sides get two free initiatives. Okay, so <clears throat> so okay, we're still gonna roll for initiative. And if the Confederates would go first, then the Confederates will go first. But if the Union goes, then they get three free initiatives. That's interesting. Three free initiatives. 
That's well, yeah, and a, and a unit cannot move more than once <coughs> during the initiatives. <coughs> during the free initiatives. Where is yeah, but I think I think basically it's saying we the union like gets a success and then they're gonna get their the first three. Yeah, once so once they get the initiative, they go one, two, three with their free ones if they if they choose to use them all. So you're still gonna do everything the same way as far as getting movement points and stuff like that. But uh, you don't have. We don't have to roll for the. We don't have to roll the dice until their three initiatives are done. If we use all three of them. Hmm. But I mean, it's quite pop. Well, okay. So let's just do this first. Yeah, that's funny. I, I'm not seeing it that way. Why not? Read the first paragraph of eleven point two. Yeah, in eleven point two. Read the last sentence of the first paragraph. If the Union Potomac Army performs a night march, it gets three free initiatives. All other armies from both sides get two free initiatives. Right. <clears throat> so this is the whole, and it says that in the scenario rules that they're going to get the scenario, the scenario starts with an automatic. So, okay, so I'll take it. There is no dice roll on the first turn. Right. They yeah, they get it. They get their three free initiatives. Because basically 11.1 .1 talks about attempting a night march and you get right. a success or failure. So we're applying, basically this implies that the union gets a success. Okay, so, and, in, in, you know, looking at this map here, now here's the one difference between the last one we played just we had cool. troops coming out of the valley. Jackson's whole force coming out of the valley. Well, yeah, remember Jackson is already here in this one. Yeah, remember you, if you're going around the map showing people stuff to push your right the control. All, is it my alt key or control? Well, mine's mine's option, but I think yours is control. Yeah, mine's no, mine's alt. Okay, alt. I'm sorry. So yeah, we came out of. We came from over here, right? The un or the Confederates did. Yeah, and we were coming down the railroad. Now, Elsie cannot move any farther than did it say Manassas Junction. So Elsie's way over here. Um, okay, so all right, there can be no leader. Okay, so let's go to or, where's the second spot? Let's go ahead and get this puppy rolling. Jeff's ready to go, man. He's not worried about Confederate command paralysis. All right, leader transfer phase. We know the Confederates cannot. So are the Yankee boys gonna? Yeah, this. Why did we take such a long break in between? I don't know. Oh, we'll be all right. We just got to get. Through the, we just need to get through the night. The night march thingy, which, if we do this right, we're probably not gonna bump heads with anybody anyhow. So, I mean, if this is gonna be pretty much the same approach. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. We need to look at the victory conditions, don't we, Pete? Yeah. Sake? Looks pretty similar. All right. So everybody, I'm not going to read all these, but there are 13 ways to get or lose points. It's basically the union player gains and loses. Um, the union player gains and loses VP points for the following occurrences, and there are 13 of them. I'll just 15 plus if a union infantry unit occupies Manassas Junction. Where is that, Jeff, on the map? Oh, yeah. We had a great time getting to that last time, Yeah, which we didn't at all. So the union has lost every battle, right? that we've played yeah, yeah so far yeah um we need to figure out how to make that different because i know they didn't design these for the union to lose every time um and then you just have a bunch of stuff about uh undemoralized union infantry adjacent to manassas junction you get plus three pretty much the same thing as the last one yeah minus 15 if a confederate infantry unit occupies centerville which was similar centerville is where that big stack i think Union infantry occupies Groveton, which is empty right now. Look, it's wide open. Now, last time we got into Groveton and then got immediately. So this is what happens in every the all three scenarios. We get the union, we get in some places, and then they get kicked out, and then just they they just fall apart. Right. So, so we've got they've got the same objectives highlighted. Boom, 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 boom. Uh Gainesville. Why is Gainesville yellow though? 
Yeah, remember sometimes they they're accidentally uh but why is Gainesville? Is there something with Gainesville here? Centerville, Groveton, 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 I like Groveton. Bull Run Bridge, Stone Bridge. Oh, okay. If the railroad station at Gainesville is destroyed or damaged, which is what I tried to do last time because I had all these union guys humping, humping and going and they just missed it. Then the union infantry or if a union it occupies Gainesville, the maximum VP for this condition is one. I don't know. I think it, I think it's a mistake unless you said something about someone can't go further than. Yeah. LZ cannot, LZ cannot move further than. Past Manassas Junction by rail. Right. We can't go out and flank them or something. All right. Can let's, I need to be reminded of the, the uh, choo choo train rules. He can move all the way through state, all the way to stations. He can move as what it didn't we say it was isn't it like as far along the rail line as yeah, it, it, it's a it's a oh man, I'm just like totally forgotten all the things. What are the conditions called? He's got four conditions. Well, he's already embarked, but he's under command paralysis. So command paralysis, the Confederate he has paralysis. Per AGA game advanced game rule two, after the second initiative win with a roll of six, all effects of command paralysis are over. We did use command paralysis in a previous one. Yeah, so until they roll a until they win a second initiative on a die roll of six, or the union passes, LZ is stranded. Miles may activate both. All right, so Richardson belongs to both the first and the fifth divisions in this scenario. Therefore, Miles may both activate and stack with him. McDowell and Tyler may also still activate Richardson. Okay. All right, so 15 for Manassas Junction. What's the spread here? Um Looks similar to the last one. Okay. Uh, Groveton. So Manassas Junction's 15. An undemoralized unit next to Manassas Junction is plus three. Um, Groveton plus eight. Uh, da, 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 da. And a Confederate infantry unit, is, and a, if, or if if they own Groveton and there's a Confederate infantry unit adjacent, Groveton's only four. If a Confederate unit occupies Groveton and a Union infantry unit is adjacent to Groveton, it's minus two. Okay, so we know that Groveton is a very unique. I mean, I got to be honest; I'd be happy with a Union marginal victory because we haven't won yet as the Union. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, we're not going to frontally assault that river line. We know that because these guys are all in abatis or breastworks. What was did we? What was the conclusion of the abatis? A one, B one, B two. Again, do you remember that? Because all those guys are B two down. Well, almost all of them. Longstreet. Well, I uh, uh, said so to see that you go to the um, module manual. And it tells us that <clears throat> no rectangle is no entrenchments. A1 is Abatee at one and a half. A1 red is breastworks under construction, still one and a half. And B2 is breastworks complete times two. Okay. Uh, the oh, because the Abatee still exists and they're just strengthening them to breastworks. That's why. Okay. Yeah, so the, the fatigues are green, yellow, orange, red. We don't know why there's purple and black. Well, the, I think the purple and black apply to advanced. Yeah, it must. Okay, so all right, so we know we're going to conduct right off the bat. We're going to conduct three moves for the union. Yeah. And by the look of the current situation, it's going to be the same approach we had in the earlier version of this one. And who is in charge here? McDowell is the district commander. All right. Which he has 
Porter Hunter, which went around Sudley Ford, and Tyler went straight towards the Stone Bridge in the real fight. And Heinzelman went around towards Sudley Ford. I don't even know what Miles did in this fight. And Richardson can activate with the first or the fifth. So he can be activated by Tyler or he can be activated by Miles. That's why the, the, the fatigue system of this is great. All right, so, all right, so we know that right off the bat, the first thing we're probably going to do, it's going to be, we're going to be doing a leader activation. So, which is good. It has to be a leader activation. You can't do a, you can't do a um, individual unit activation. So cavalry not moving then or what? Nope. Individual movement cannot happen. It has to be a leader. Act well, if you activate McDowell. McDowell can uh, command yeah, the cavalry. He, yeah, he's the overall. But Hunter and Tyler can't. And so who can do Keys and Richardson? Anybody? Now Richardson can be activated by... No, Richardson belongs to the first and the fifth. Just Richardson. Not Keys. Well, how do you know that? Because it says in the rules. Ah. And McDowell can also activate them. I, I got you. Okay. All right, well, okay, so, all right, well, we're going to follow the typical freaking bull run. Jeff, we cannot uh, pause this long between games. <laughs> no, I agree. Well, I, I think once we start, we will be fine. I know. But... Let's just get out of the night. Well, okay, so I think the first thing we're probably going to do is, is um, let's see, any leader may be... Army on the first initiative. Only units from this army may move if the Union Potomac Army performs their night march. He gets three free initiatives, all of the armies, both. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so if we activate McDowell right off the bat, who his effectiveness sucks wieners as a four. All these guys suck wieners. Yeah. That was what our biggest problem. So we can except, except for Heinzelman, he sucks bratwursts. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. So I'm thinking we activate. I'm, let, I'm kind of letting you take charge here as I kind of get back into the swing of things here. All right. So if we activate McDowell, and well, he, he gets free initiatives. What's up, gamers? Activation is you can fail an activation if I remember right. Correct. Yeah. So do you? For night moves, do you, are we still rolling and doing all that stuff as normal? Well, the, no, we already know that the initiative, they already get the initiative. No, not for initiative, for length of movement. Like, I mean, Yeah, you're still going to roll for length of movement, but don't we have to roll for, because it's leader activation? Oh, I don't. Lead, wait, hold on. No, I think that's only attacking and stuff. No, you have, no, because you have to, or am I thinking of a different game? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> be... Mm -hmm. well, you, and your, you and your great battles. Okay. Activate Lear, page eight. Join us, everyone, for page eight. We're using 1.5. Yeah, I just want to make sure before we do this. It's been two years since we played. Finally actually right. The player with the initiative selects an eligible leader anywhere on the map. The player with the initiative must select one or more units belonging to the active leader's command that are situated within the leader's command radius. Which, oh yeah, what's the special rules on this command radius for the Union is two? two. It's two for everyone, even Confederates. All right, so Beauregard doesn't get, or Johnson doesn't get the... Uh, I'll look here, but... No. Okay. Oh, that's right. His effectiveness is only used for the the uh, assault stuff. Okay, so let's activate McDowell, and he's going to, in turn, kick over Tyler and Hunter. He's activating both of them? Yeah. So now, he's gonna, yeah, and those but guys... You still, but you still move one unit at a time, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's going to activate. Oh, here we go. I already took my chills, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so 
we're going to start. So we activated the leader. We activate McDowell. I just want to make sure. We, once we get, we get by this hump, we'll be rolling. So, all right. One, one more is belonging to the active leader's command that are situated within his command. Okay. All. Steps are used by every unit selected for participation. All right, mark on your track in the box. Do not move. They activate the active leader may transfer to any hex. <laughs> Let's see. This is the only thing we need to be clear of. So the only well, I tell you what I'm looking up is when we roll for McDowell. Oh yeah, never mind. Never mind. All right, so infantry leader in AGA, it's an ID six with a minimum of two. Okay, so let's roll. We're gonna roll for McDowell, one D six with a minimum of two. Where's our dice set? All right, there it is. So for McDowell, Jeff rolls a three. Okay, so we're gonna take, we're gonna go here. We're gonna get, we, get, we need to get things moving. So yep. we're gonna take, uh, I guess Burnside. Where you at Burnside, old buddy? All right, we're gonna take Burnside and he can only move three. We're gonna fatigue him. All right. Yep. First thing you do, fatigue him. One, two. Oh, wait a minute. No, we can't move through that guy. Wait, what guy? Oh, hold on a second. No, that's let's backtrack here. Hold on. Yeah, let's oh yeah, see, because if oh I get it now. So if keys. All right, yeah, no, that's fine. We'll go one, two, three with him. All right. Where's his buddy? Fatigue increase. One, two, because he's not going to be able to move in there with him. Where's Hunter? Oh, come on. I hate just trying to find these damn things in these stacks. Put Hunter up here with Burnside. All right, and then we're going to move... We'll activate keys. So if keys moves in here, the only zones of control that can be entered would be this guy's because of that rule. I'm sorry, so what did you just move? I moved keys. Now I'm moving. Oh, sorry. Didn't see that. I'm getting us started here. One, two. We're going to move him one more because he can't move in there because he's got we got one more unit that's got to come. So we're going to go one, two. So now help me understand this. No one can move into that guy's zone of control now or any now, zone of control. Now that's the only zone of control that can be moved into. For the rest of the this initiative or? This initiative, right. I got you. Wow. That's I'm crazy. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of a screwy rule. Yeah, I don't like it. Do the, uh, can you remind me when you moved Hunter, does Hunter move with anyone he wants to or does he... Yeah, remember we just put with either one of the units. That's why I'm just picking them up and moving them. Um, question is, where do we want McDowell to go? Do we want McDowell to go with? Well, McDowell should probably go with Sherman. Are you activating Palmer or what? Yeah, so the cavalry. Yeah, we probably should have moved him first, shouldn't we? Well, let's say we were smart and did it. Let's yeah, just... we'll say we did. We moved him first. Now, does he is he under the same rule? Like the same role? Yeah, so he's well. He rolled for the with the leader. Oh, so the leader, but does he yeah. get any bonus? I mean, if you roll him individually. Oh, he. Oh wait, it says no cavalry can move. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right, so he what? could have. So he could have activated. He can activate miles too, and that cavalry is not going to affect that. So yeah, we're going to get everybody rolling. So let's go with. Uh, we'll take. Heinzelman, get, let's get Oliver O here. Where's Oliver O? All right, that cavalry's not going to affect anything. So he would have gone one, two. 
All right. And then. So you know, real quick, hold on a minute. One, so two. In, in this initiative. Right. Let me make sure I understand. Once someone night marches, they can't night march again. All right. I don't so it's kind of a, yeah, I know. It's kind of a, God damn it. I don't understand. These are free initiatives. I get that part. It's just like you're going to hit a point where you can't move anywhere because you're kind of all backed up with. Well, yeah, and that's just kind of the way it went anyhow. So, hmm. two. What is happening here? I got to turn that off. Who's dinging us? Yeah, I'm going to turn my Facebook off. It's Brian being a pain in the ass. Oh, Brian, come on, brah. All right, so we're not going to activate Miles because he's not going to be able to get through anybody. So we won't, we'll leave him alone. Okay. All right, so let's make sure. Let's go back to 11.2. We've only conducted one initiative. And so what about these guys? Okay, well, go ahead and read it, and then I have a question. All right. Time. Yeah, we need to upgrade, but the, like I say, we just decided we were going to do this last night. So, Muzzle, how you doing? Ig, what's up, buddy? Toll, how you doing, brother? Yeah, well, Over I don't point. Know. What's the difference between 3.78 and whatever? The Vassal mod. I, think. I know, but what's it? All right. He does yeah. not have to use all of the free after he, okay. Only use blah, blah, blah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry, gamer with copyright. The bratwurst in there. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. He's free to move any unit he could normally move if he wins the initiative. All right. The player who had the night march is free to move any unit he could normally move if he wins the initiative. All right. The following restrictions only the active leader may be performed. No single unit activations are permitted. No unit may move twice. In the first initiative. Oh, in, okay. No unit which moves in the first initiative may move in the second or third. All right. So, so we've done it. We're done. <laughs> well, those units that we move can't move again. So we haven't moved miles yet. So now we can take a, the next free initiative for miles, but where in the hell is he going to go? Now, is he going to roll for movement? Yeah, but where is he going to go? I mean, I don't know. I mean, if he gets six. Because Franklin is in the way. Well, he'd have to move through him, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you need to roll really high, but that's what I'm saying. Like this, uh, You roll this time for Frank for a This seems weird. Boom. Uh, there you go. So now you can move miles. So we can move miles up and around. <coughs> or do we want to keep miles... Back here to keep Long Street and everybody else honest. Because I think that's what we had to do the last time. Yeah, I mean, are you going to keep somebody in Centerville? Yeah, we don't need to take Miles away. <laughs> I think Miles needs to move. Um. Okay, so I think one of Miles' units probably needs to move. Down to McLean's Ford? Um, I was thinking more of down to 45, 21 in case we decide we don't want to give you the opportunity to just walk across the river and go bitch slap somebody. Okay. So, uh, either one of them, right? Davies or blinker. Yeah. So they can't go into a zone of control though. So I thought the new initiative, they could. Oh, new, uh, new, I'm sorry. You're right. New initiative. You're right. But fatigue him. But this way, um, oh man, this is, this is the first time I played GCACW with my new mouse. Um, this will keep them both honest because Longstreet will have to stop if he crosses the Ford, and so will Yule. And then we just want to keep Blinker here for now. Is there any reason Blinker can? Is he? Can they only march? They can't. Well, we want to get Miles down with. We want to move him one south, so he can be still in command of both his units on the next. Okay, so now that leaves now Miles could have activated Richardson, but we probably don't need to do anything with Richardson. Is there any reason they should dig in, or can they do that on this turn? 
or we're going to be using them to attack. I mean, they're these these uh, southern boys are strong along this river. Yeah. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, since we can't do individual units, do we have any commanders hidden on here anywhere? Yeah. I mean, that's what I was going to ask. These guys, these bros yeah. in the back, the New York, New Jersey, Michigan guys, they're just they, stuck there, right? Yeah. They cannot move. And the Confederates are in command paralysis anyhow right now. So, so leaders move with units. Yeah. You, yeah. You can't leave a leader by himself. But I thought there was something with the division. The, the, I thought one of the leaders couldn't move with a unit or something. Like there was some weird, something weird. It's just. We no. have, we, the only thing we have weird is this command paralysis thing, which I want to look at real quick. Oh, that's back in the beginning. So basically what happens there is if someone rolls, if the Confederates roll a six on initiative, the, the, the union wins, wins uh, initiative. Well, the Confederates don't leave. Where is this 2.0 rule? God darn it. I know. I had a hard time finding it, but I did find it. It is on page. It's under random events. So 2.0 random, because it's usually something you do in a random event. What page number? 14, 2 random events, second one down. Command paralysis. Do, 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 do. If this result occurs, then the first two times in the current turn, which the, it, it is, it is occurred in the current turn that the indicated player wins the initiative with a six, the opposing player is considered to have won the initiative instead. So, oh yeah. So if he okay, so if he wins with a two, three, four, five, or a tie, he's going to get it. But if he wins with a six, right. right. And then after the second time that happens, LZ becomes available to. Correct. All right, so let's, uh, I'm going to roll for an inch. Somehow we have to keep track of that. And Yank's got it. Okay. So yeah. Now, well, we know what we got to do. We got to run around that end. We're out of the night march thingy. That's done. We've had the three free moves, so. Okay. So we probably need to activate McDowell again. And skedaddle. Well, well, I sure hope you're gonna we have need, to roll. We need a big roll. We needed that six on the line. This one. Yeah, we need a big roll. So you, you, we'll let you do this one. Oh, I just I already rolled big one. To, okay. Right. Let's see if you've got flowing luck. Do I have the mojo? Oh, you suck. <laughs> you suck. You suck. Okay. So they, so they got a minimum of two. So all right. Well, shit. Okay, so why did you do all right? So hold on. Let me remember. You you activate you said we're activating McDowell. Right. And he, he can command anybody, or is he gonna command those leaders too? He's the, he's the district leader, so he's gonna command all those leaders within two hexes of him. Oh wait, so then do we need to tell say which ones we're commanding or like well that's what we were calling to command all those guys. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So then wow, so everyone gets one move. Fan freaking tastic. No, they get two. Minimum Why? of two. Minimum of two. Okay. Special rule. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move the guy with McDowell. All right. Go ahead. Do your thing. Wait. Fatigue. Well, let me let me let me ask you: Is there any reason someone else should go before him? Mm, no, because we moved what's his name up around the north route. Okay. So I'm going to move so him. We're going to have, have a chain. He's going to get as far as Thornton. Well, you know. Yeah. And that's part of, yeah. So Tyler's got Shank, hmm. and Keys has got to stay right there where he is. We can't give up that bridge. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. Nobody can. So they yeah. So Tyler can move. Tyler's going to move, and then Hunter's going to move, and then Heinzelman's going to move. So I got to pee. You're on your own for a second. Elk lick run. I hate moving that guy way up there like that. Why is my thing dinging like that? What do I got running that's binging and bonging like that tab? 
Ah, that's why. Please hold everyone. I'm closing Facebook. Okay. All right. So hopefully you're seeing what I'm doing, everybody. Um, moving that. Okay. I don't know why that shuts down there. Okay. Ugh. So Franklin, I got to keep in there. Well, the Yanks better hope that they get the initiative again. I'm sorry. I do yeah. not like this. What's it cost to move? Can, you can do, you can do a minimum of one hex move, right? You can, yeah. I'm just looking at the terrain chart here. So I, I, I did a little mess around with my computer to get some stuff shut down. So all of that is rolling hill. That's three, but I can move one. So this whole group here is going to go. I think you can fatigue, fatigue a stack here. Sorry. Boom. They're going to move. Port, did you move Porter yet? No. Because I yeah. see what you're saying. Okay, I got you. All right. All right. So is everyone in command here? Oh, wait. Not, now they're not because McDowell's way the heck down there. So, well, McDowell's the, he's the district commander. I know, but he's still only got a range of two. <clears throat> right. Yeah. <laughs> We're exactly. not going to use him for any coordinated. Well, you know, yeah, district commanders are the only ones that can do grand assaults. All right, I'm rolling for yeah, an example. Wait, you got Franklin sitting back there. Well, are we leaving him there? He's still within command range of Heinzelman for now. Uh, Remember now, we're not in, we're out of night mode, so the individual units are going to be able to move this. That sucks. He hits as far as he can go. So it's initiative again. Because we couldn't, we couldn't do miles that time. He was out of range. Now hold on, real quick. Remind me if you hadn't activated McDowell. Oh, if then we could only do one unit, then one division, yeah. Well, or one core, you know, whatever. No, one division, yeah. Oh, I thought it was just one unit. Tim, have you arrived again? All right, initiative. Okay, here I go. You're up now. Let's just do that. Let's just each other take whatever one. So you're so oh, Union Boys. Oh, again. We got it again. All right. Well, we're going to do it again. But so we're going to kick. We don't even need to activate McDowell this time because he can't reach but one person. Um, we have got to get the. Well, it doesn't matter. We got to get we, down to Groveton, right? Yeah, we have, so we're going to. All right. I'm rolling. Here we go. Um. It doesn't matter. It's McDowell or Totter. They can't reach anybody else. I mean, Totter can. He's a division commander. Uh, here we go. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> <laughs> so you... All right. So if you activated McDowell, only Tyler and McDowell could do something. Yeah, Tyler's the only one in range. Keys could have done something. Yeah, but well, he's... Well, he's part of Tyler, so... And Totter can reach him. And since Heinzelman's there, maybe we're going to pull him out. Okay. To get right. him with his unit. So you're going to move Tyler? Yeah. And Key's going to have to go with him. So one, two. And he's only going to move away one initiative. How come you didn't move Shank? I did move everybody. You moved. Oh, he, I, he was supposed to go with Tyler. I'm sorry. He did. I didn't have him checked. Apparently, fatigue him. I did already. Okay. I just I just forgot to select him. So I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. Initiative. Uh, it's a tie. So, but it's, it's a six. Tie. So the union gets to go again. But are we going to? God damn. <laughs> but remember the whole fatigue thing. But this is only one turn. Yeah. And are we going to fatigue them out just to get into Groveton? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. One turn? Yeah, but remember we had initiative. That was one. And then we we went on the second one. We moved them. 
where McDowell activated everything. And then we just had the third one where McDowell activated with Tyler there. So that's three activations for those guys. So they should be yellow. So here's the decision. Do we go ahead and four bang Tyler's division to get into Groveton? Why not? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, put it this way. So unlike the last scenario, in order to go after him, we got to pull units off the river. Because LZ is the only thing out there yep. by himself. Okay. So, all right. So it's your turn. Oh, I'm I'm going. You're rolling the. So I'm roll. Am I activating McDowell or Tyler? It it, it doesn't matter because okay. you're only going to be the one division. There you go. So now you got enough to get them all into Groveton. I could get. <clears throat> I could get Sherman into Gainesville. And Schneck and Tyler into Groveton. One, two, three, four. Yes, you could. Oh boy. <laughs> didn't we do this last time? <laughs> well, no, I didn't make it to Gainesville last time. We were time. one short. But um when so now we gotta look at extended march. That's something we always forget to do. I think I don't need to mess with it because I'm organized. Yeah, you're supposed to remember those things. Why is that guy red? I just marked him red. Oh, okay. So, hold on. Oh, extend to March. I got the table right here. When to consult. If a unit on its normal side reaches fatigue level three or four. Oh, yeah, we didn't extend. We didn't do it last time, did we? Well, let, let's hold on. Let's let's go back and let's do it. I, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, do the extended March from last time. All right. Well, so let me. He is a modified diary. He was organized. So if it's less than or equal to five on the organized side. All right. Let me just roll and see what we get. All right. All right. Good. And roll for the other unit. So, and that other unit is no, who else, no one else is orange. Actually, we got to do it for, um, yeah, the, uh, Oh, sh yeah, the guy up underneath. Uh, yeah, why is he not? Did we miss we... an activation on him? Which one? On Shank. Yeah, I think we didn't. I think yeah. we didn't make him orange. Yeah, make him orange and then roll. I'm going to roll. Boom. Uh oh. Five. Oh, no, he's good. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, now. He's just the only one that hasn't moved three times yet, but he will. All right. So, so now, do we roll extended march before or after they move? You roll. I think you rolled before. Four. Yeah, so he's good. Okay. So, do you want to take him all the way down to Gainesville? I'm nervous, but yes, I do. Okay, go for it. That's why we do this. Now, does McDowell have to move with him? How do I block this fucking asshole? Does McDowell have to move with him? Does a leader uh, does a leader have to be on a unit? Oh, well, I'm gonna go to YouTube. I'm gonna block somebody. Oh, wait. It says it's on Twitch. Uh, how the hell do I do that? Yeah, I don't think I'm on Twitch. I didn't do it at this time. I think I'm gonna just dump Twitch. Yeah, let me. Um... I couldn't figure out how to do that when we got that one last night. <laughs> <laughs> let me remove the Twitch stream. There we go. Can you you can do that while we're going? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> yep, I did. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. Take a take a hit of your vape. Yeah. Oh, good point. Thanks. Um. All right. I've done that. So. Five five. Now Confederates finally get a move. Wait, a minute, wait, wait, wait. You got one more unit to move. Wait, keys. Who? Keys. Uh, Tyler was in Sudley Springs. Oh, so he could, couldn't reach him. He was here. One, two. Yeah, you're right. Okay, couldn't reach him. Okay, so it's initiative. And uh, can it's a tie. Confederates get it. Yeah, Confederates get ties. 
Okay. So they finally get to move. What's now, that? Now they finally get to move. We don't have any leaders. Oh, yeah, we couldn't do a leader transfer. So they can't do it at all? Or Wait a minute. Now I'm wondering if they can do it now. A federal player may not make any leader transfers in the initial leader transfer phase. <laughs> Excuse me, crackhead. Um, but we can do it now. Oh, really? I th okay, see, this is where I'm confused. Like, why do they even have a leader transfer phase? Don't you just do it when you're moving? So it kind of moves unit to unit? What the? You need to, you need to uh, pause and go get a drink or something? No, I got a drink right here. It's like a freaking bird <laughs> in my throat or something. I can't, um, I, can't, I can't get over there and give you mouth to mouth. So. Yeah, I'm good. Or Heimlich. Camp. I followed the sound of the guns. <laughs> hey, Camp. Let's see. Thanks for being on us with uh, on with us last night. Appreciate that, man. Uh, okay. Let's see. We don't need that. Where's the other thing? At? What do you? What do you like? I'm just checking the move the leader thingy. Okay. Well, just real quick, I'm going to answer my question. I was asking. A leader may never occupy a hex by himself by itself. Right. It must always be stacked with a subordinate unit. A unit is considered attached to a unit when it's stacked and must move with that unit wherever it goes. During a march or activate leader activation. Exception, see leaders in combat. More than one leader may be attached to the same unit if represented different organizational. Once a unit with one or more attached leaders begins its movement in a march, it may not drop off a leader and attach it to a different unit in any hex entered during that action. Once a unit with one or more begins its movement, it may not drop off. A leader may neither move nor activate by itself, although it may transfer. See below. Leader We're transfer better. phase or activate leader action. Okay. So leaders may transfer during an activate leader action 5.2. Such a transfer may only be performed once per action and only before units march. Okay. So like, so um, how do you know who someone's, is it, you just assume it's the, the, the unit that they're right above. So Johnson is stacked with Jackson right now. I haven't even seen them yet. Move over. Oh. There you go. So Johnson currently is stacked with Jackson. So if Jackson, you... Jackson is just a brigade unit. Johnson and Beauregard are the only two leaders. Okay. But I'm saying Johnson is connected with Jackson because he's on top of him. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's stacked with him. Yeah, that's that's all that, you know. Yeah, but if, but if he wants to move change to be with B... He would do it. You would activate a leader action and then move him to B, and then you could do something. Why would you have to move him to B? They're in the same hex. I'm saying if you know you're going to spread your troops out a little bit. Oh, saying, oh, yeah. I mean, you, you got to. Well, no, because he can move with whoever. If we want to transfer. So let's say that those three <laughs> green units are in three different hexes. All right. Okay. Okay. And let's say they're all adjacent, but they're in three different hexes, and Johnston is with Jackson. Okay. If, if we want Johnston to be with one of the other units, then we move him to the other unit before we do the activation or before we roll for movement. If they're in the same hex, he can move out of there with any one of them that he wants. He can move with any of them, but like I say, if they're not in the same hex and you want to transfer them, you got to do it before movement. Um, I I think I think you might I, th I think you might be wrong. Well, they're uh, in the same hex. Why do you have to? Well, hold on. Is Johnson an army or district leader? We're going to fight here tonight. I got money. Let's fight. I'm going to win because you're like, you can't even breathe. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and that's rare. I rarely say I'd win a fight. I mean, I'm no. Is Johnson an army or district leader? Johnson is a district. See the red star? Okay. They're both district leaders. If they're situated in the same hex. Are you okay? Look on page eleven under leader transfer. Do, 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 do. Page eleven. Leader uh, transfer. I'm sorry, page eleven of the one version one point five rules. The basic. Yeah, I'm looking at. All right, which part of it? Because we're not doing the leader transfer phase. No. So, 
well, let's just look at activate leader action first. Leaders may transfer during an activate leader action. Such a transfer may only be performed once per action and only before units march. Right. But they're all in the same hex, so he's with all his units. I say what you're Just saying. Just because he's in that stack uh, above Jackson doesn't mean he's with Jackson. He's with all of them. So if freaking Bartow was over in Gainesville and Jackson and Johnston were down in Manassas Junction before the the activation, you would pick – well, they can't be too far away, but you would pick Johnston up and move him to the other unit. Then you would do your movement stuff. Okay. I, I just was misunderstanding. I thought you had to so be. When we move, we can move B, Bartow, and Jackson in three different directions, and Johnson can go with either one of them. Okay. I misunderstood. But on the next activation, if we wanted to do them again and we wanted Johnson to be with one of the other units, then we would pick him up, move him to the other unit before moving. So, okay. So now the question is, is the closest units are the orange stuff. And they're not very strong. That's for sure. So who do we want to move? To to go, go, kind of take over a second, Joe. I'm texting my mom. She asked me something. Just so. Okay. So go ahead. All right. You go ahead and text your mom. I will. Uh, man, these why are these Confederate? They seem a lot weaker than they were the last time we played. Right, we need to cut some people off. So, Beauregard cannot activate everybody for where he's at. So, we want to transfer him. Damn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those guys are never going to get there. This is tough. All right. I think we need to take Beauregard. Yeah. All right. Let's take Beauregard. We're going to transfer him to the bottom stack. All right. And now we're going to activate. We're going to activate Cook. Don't say it. All right. So we're going to. What's about? Beauregard gets. He's a district commander. Where's that at? He's an infantry, so he's going to get 1d6 plus 1. All right, so he's going to roll. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, well, that bit the big dog. Well, <laughs> do the confederates i'm back i'm back done texting my mother i think um god did the, i thought the confederates got something do they not get something in this like when they roll one i thought they got a bonus or something well yeah the leader got gets a plus one so he got two and see i was uh, gonna move cook off the line but now i can't get anybody over there to plug that hole where he's at all right so Who'd you move? Oh, my God, I moved anybody yet. Because <laughs> you rolled one. Because I rolled one. So I think what we're going to have to do is, well, we're not going to, we can't get over there and stop them. So let's go with these guys. One, two. Uh, let's see what's he got in here. We'll leave the North Carolina regiment there and we will take. No, not him. We'll take him. Take him. He can't go far. Hey, did I so we're only going to do activate. I mean, like the guys that are in Gainesville are done. They're done for the turn. I mean, this this particular scenario, they're done because it's a one turn scenario. A three turn scenario. Oh gosh, man, I not read that read that completely wrong. Sorry. Pretty sure it's three turns. No, it is. Game, game. No, you're right. Wow. Yeah, that I think, Jeff, the, the one that was three turns was the one that we accidentally went into 
<laughs> before we went live. Remember when we picked the wrong scenario? Yeah. Well, not we. What? Me. I can't see the freaking... Oh my God, it is only one. There, uh, well, you know what? <laughs> okay, so. Okay, well. This is interesting because. Um, Alan, what's up, buddy? Stig. Um, there is no way they can take Manassas Junction in one turn. Not possible. I don't understand. You would have to, well, you'd have to do the stupid thing they did. Boy, we've epically failed with this so far. So the deal is, all right, so, okay, well, all right, so let's say this game was over right here. All right. Okay. Yeah. We've got the Yanks have units in Gainesville and Groveton. And so right now they have plus eight for Groveton, and there's no Confederate infantry adjacent to Groveton. So really what you want to do is you want to move, you know, Evans down there or something. Um, and then, uh, where is it? I thought I saw something about if the road station at Gainesville is destroyed or damaged, or if a union infantry unit occupies it. So they have another one. So right now they have nine points. So you got that thing I was looking for a union marginal victory. Uh, so now what happens though, if we move one of these ribs, because Tyler and McDowell, the units underneath them. They're done. They can't yeah, do anything. They are done for the turn. You you, so, you kind of don't want to move Evans because if they take the stone, if the union takes stone bridge, that's three points. Right. And I couldn't reach. Okay. So what's going to happen is, is Hutton, Epa Hutton is going to move when he gets initiative. He is going to move to Henry House Hill. And he's going to be adjacent to Groveton. Correct. So then that way it's only going to be plus four. That's only going to be four victory points. And we got gain unless we get something into Gainesville. Yeah. Then I mean, you do that. Oh, if oh, let me tell you something. You know what's going to be the breaker in this? What's that? And and by the way, I think we might finish. Because he's going to sit there, and then he's going to rail all the way down to Haymarket. And then he's going to move adjacent to McDowell. Yeah, all right, sorry, I'm reading the... Well, okay, so, all right, all right. So it's a good thing that we've moved and took Gainesville, and we've took Groveton. Correct. So now I think what the Union has to do is attack Evans. Yeah, I'm getting, I need to move back over there. You, oh. Yeah, they need to. Um, yeah, just mean. Yeah, they need to take that stone bridge because then that'll give them um, two points. Bull Run Bridge gives them four points, but that's that's going to be a bear to that's, take. That, that's not happening. That's what I mean. There, this is a. It's a right, well, any, okay, let me roll an issue so we can see who's next. Let's and it's a it. tie again. Confederates. Okay. All right. So Beauregard is out of position to activate multiples. We know that Tyler can't do anything. So let's activate. Let's activate. God darn it. Do we risk it? Take a shot at what well, doesn't matter. Hey, I've got an idea. I'm listening. Go ahead. I mean, I'd be tempted to move, except for you, you, you open up a flank, but can we move? Cock coke up so, into up into the on forty eighteen to Blockstone Bridge. I'd make it soup. I mean, but then it kind of opens up that back. I don't know to force them to attack. Yeah, I mean they're gonna have to. I mean they have to clear out Evans, but if we block that now, they got to get rid of two units out of that, and then then move Hunting down to Henry House Hill. The next initiative. All right, I'm gonna roll and see. Confederate, you're gonna get six. Gets a yeah, one d six minimum of two. Oh boy, 
Well, I rolled bad last time, so this one has to be good. Oh, five. Five. All right. So, oh boy. So you're saying we should take Cook and go up here? I think so. Go up here. Yeah. All right. I'm down with it. He's going to lose his breastworks, though. Yeah. So, I mean, Balls Ford and Island Ford are not worth anything, except right. for they can, the union can move across it and get to the Three, back three. side. All right. Initiative. Okay. Or, okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now let's move. And, and, and at some point, you could uh, breast war or start building abatis for Evans. Yeah. Let's get hunting over next to Henry House Hill first. Five. Damn. Oh, and remember oh. to. Uh, oh. Wait a minute. Well, I mean, you, I think you have to say the unit you're rolling for, right? I did. I said hunting. Okay. All right. So instead of going there, we can always move him one hex, right? Yeah. What about here? Because it keep well, no, Tyler and him can't do anything. Yeah, no, I would move him to Henry House Hill. Then that yeah. way you're kind of blocking if, if the I like that. union call. gets froggy and tries to come across those Fords. It's like, okay, well. Damn. What's wrong with the dice? Oh, wow. And we can't do nothing with Elsie yet. So what about Stuart and Munford? Is there anything they can do? Yeah, but they're cavalry. They're not, um, they're not after units. They're not going to, um, they, they won't have an effect. Well, I'm just trying to think if you could move, start moving them around. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, I was just thinking if, can you, man, it'd be hard to get them around to Sudley Springs or something to kind of block the union guys from going down there. Well, we need to get somebody back up on those Fords. No, no, they can't get there. They're not going to get there. The union is not going to get there. Who's in there with Munford? Why don't you activate Johnson or Beauregard? And... Yeah. And you got all kinds of cavalry, man. It'd be nice to use them. Yeah, we, we got to get these Beauregard units out of the way. Oh, well, here's how you block that Ford. Just put Stewart or Munford on 4019 or... Yeah. Or even 4020. Don't they block no matter... It zones control, so, yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, let's do... I mean, of course you're going to roll. You know, you want we're moving all these guys once, so you're rolling like really high for these guys. <laughs> yeah. But these the cavalry units are not. No, they're not holding them. But remember, they're going to block the. No, no, no. I mean, for activation, um, Burger can't activate them. They have to activate themselves individually. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah so you think? Are you trying to? Like, let's what see, you, okay. Let's get. We need to get. Like what? What are all these guys doing? Yeah, I think I think you're. I think we need to get. Let's activate the two cavalry units that are. No, we can't. It's the only one. I'm already one. <laughs> All right, let's activate Stuart and get him up one. So, okay, he's going to get two, two d six plus one, four five. All right, let's get him up there to block the Fords. Okay. All right, initiative. Johnny Rebs. So now I say let's activate Beauregard. Okay. And try to get his couple units that are here early. And uh, hopefully we get a good roll and we can move them up the highway. Okay. It's going to be a 1d6. He gets a 1d6 plus one. 1d6 plus two. He gets a 1d6 plus one. Four, five. Very good. And these guys aren't big enough to block him. So one. Oops. Wait a minute. So that combined combat value in a hex is what's currently in there, not what would be in there after they move in there, right? It's so what's like, in, it's what's in there. So they're only two. It's two. We said okay. it was less than three, right? Yeah. So everybody, just so you know, while Jeff's doing that, there's a three. movement point cost to enter a friendly occupied hex. So if if there's uh, less than three, so I guess two points, which is what is in forty one twenty four you don't have the there's no penalty to move in there so it's just talking about like if if a hex is crowded you know it's harder to move through that which you know traffic traffic control all right yankee boy your turn boy your turn and you better roll big 
who we're going to activate. Please hold. All right, so what else do they need to take here? I like the three turn scenarios better, Todd. Well, this is a different, this is definitely a challenge here. Yeah, this um, is the battle, that's for sure. Now, this is one that I would be just overjoyed to play again until it was crack it. But yeah. Look to me like, unless something, okay, what is Gainesville if a union unit is got a Confederate unit next to it? Nothing. It doesn't. It doesn't impact it. It's it's oh, plus wow. one no matter what. Or if a okay yeah. All right. So we know they're getting one because I doubt we're going to drive them out. We might get lucky. Who knows? I mean, they really need to take stone. I mean, <sighs> Stone Bridge is the only other thing I see them taking. Like they're not going to take Bull Run Bridge. First of all, we got first of all, all we right, gotta get so if it ended right now, we're sitting on four. We're sitting on five. And that's a Confederate marginal victory. Gosh, man. All right. So, so really, Hunter and Hunter needs to get down there and take care of Huntoon, hunting because Early's coming down there. But they're going to go orange. Yeah. So I'm going to activate Hunter and try to get them down there. So you, you fatigue them first or you roll first? You roll. Well, you're going to fatigue them regardless because you're activating them. It's whether they move or not. So. All right, well, they're going, so now I'm rolling for that guy for – see, he's fine. Who are you moving? Hunter? One. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, they're not even – they're, they're not wow, even – What gonna, an epic failure. I mean, they're not even going to get – I mean, they're not going to be able – even if they get down there, they can't battle. They'll be done. But anyway, okay. So this guy's going to fatigue. It, this is an yeah. This is one that needs to be played. Maybe we, Jeff. I thought we were going to be here. I thought we'd be playing for days. I mean, we're going to. Well, good thing we can do another scenario tomorrow night. <laughs> this is this is literally the one day battle at Manassas, and it's focused on the maneuver element of the battle. Confederate initiative. Have. We have totally failed. No, wait, hold on. I didn't roll for this. Oh, yeah, I did. Never mind. I did. Johnny Reb's got it. Johnny Reb has it. So what? Is so Gainesville doesn't mean shit. And if Beauregard, those guys are yellow. And you can attack. Okay, 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 okay. okay. You, are you going to take Sherman? I'm going to, here's what I want to do. What is the stone bridge again? Victory wise. It is plus two. Four. A bull run bridge. No stone bridge is only plus two. Yep. Plus two. Okay. So <clears throat> here's what I want to do. I don't, these guys are useless. I mean, they're out of the game as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to roll for Beauregard. Okay. Oh, give me a good number. Come on, baby. One, D6 plus one. Come on. Two, three. God damn it. All right, so here's what I want to do. One, two. He can't. One, two. Oh, one, two, three. Oh, oh, oh. That's Beauregard's a district commander, buddy. Yeah, right, what does that mean? Means he can do a grand assault. One, two. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. One. Oh, which I want to go. I want to move him up to. See, that's where we should have transferred it to him. So he's got to go with one of the units he moved with. Okay. Now, you need to roll for Force March for both those guys. Oh, Extended March, yeah. Five, he's good. Five, he's good. Okay. All right. Initiative. Yeah. Well, hold on, Jeff. I'm listening. You know what I'm getting ready to do, right? It's a, it's a plus one to the roll. 
if the march by unit on its normal side increases its fatigue level from three oh through them three two four okay got it yep yep all right we're good sorry game specific modifiers for the union has a plus one we know that no no all units in 1861 have a plus one so they would have flipped both, both those guys go to d son of a bitch and i think one of the union guys did too but i don't remember which one oh gee oh gee rick well there goes that <laughs> well yeah. i mean you can still do it it's just <laughs> this game i uh, love this game union got an issue of your turn i love this game <laughs> I know it's it's it is it's brain racking isn't it it's ridiculous is what it is it's so dumb it's like i can't do anything yeah the problem is is tim is we got to get hunter next to somebody and he's going to be forward if he moves what's the red oh non-finished railroad okay all right uh, i'm going to activate hunter yeah you heard me all right I'll, yeah go for it power roll Hold on here. Let me think about this. Yeah, Hunter, do it. Six. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so we're going to fatigue him. We're going to roll for extended march. Yeah, baby. Plus one. He's deed. So he's, is that is that disorganized or demoralized? Yeah, disorganized. I need, to, I need to really work on all the, the levels that they can be and what they mean and how they get out of it. Right. One two three really i was thinking about moving him behind well it wouldn't matter because you won't be able to attack him you could have gone above tyler to the right and got underneath evans uh well he started and he started there in thornton one two oh yeah i could you okay you know what yeah i'm gonna let's do that boom i mean i, I don't Okay. And move Porter just down one. He's fine. No, I meant straight down. Why would you do that? Well, what if we transferred McDowell on the next one up to, uh, oh, my head's bleeding, up to Hunter? Okay. And so we need to check the grand assault because uh, can a fatigue for Patrick? Oh, good, perfect timing. Oh, oh yeah, Patrick. Patrick. Can a fatigue four unit participate in a grand assault? Patrick, the the, the dial in number for this is five five five. Get on and help these two goobers. <laughs> uh, initiative roll. Yankees. Oh no, you haven't rolled yet. Yeah, you did. Yankees. Well, dude, we don't. We've got to. Um, no, yeah, they're red. They can't do anything else. That's what I'm saying. They can't. They can't participate in anything. And we got to have McDowell up there in order to do a grand assault. So we have to pick okay, him up. Well, hold on. Do, should we? No, he said no. Yeah. All right. Well, should we transfer McDowell up there to get keys and heinzelman and franklin and all that to take care of coke coke and then they would all still be because they're going to go to orange and then they could maybe try to take evans out i mean it's gonna be across a river which is ridiculous oh, we, we gotta do something okay so all right how do you transfer mcdowell you pick him up because we're going to move him before yeah, but there's something about there's some there are some limitations. You can't just move them all over the map. There are rules. We have rules, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Patrick can probably type it faster than we're gonna find it, but damn rules. We hey, all right. So Patrick, we want to pick McDowell up before we execute any activation because we want to use him and we want to move him up here somewhere. Patrick's like, uh, you know, never mind. I'm getting off this string. Yeah, he left already. He said, damn Muppets. <laughs> you got to pay Patrick to come help you. You can't just get him for free. Okay, yeah, seriously, he'll be able to find it. Tell us before I... Oh, here it is. We 
we might need an intervention. I know we're trying, Perry. We're trying. <laughs> Only problem is we need to attack something that will push the victory conditions up to 10 hexes. So we can pick McDowell up, move him up to 10 hexes. All right. So there's no limitation then. All right. So does it matter where we move him? Heinzelman or does it matter? Well, I mean, if we're going to use. So who is that? That's Keys up top, right? Okay. So if we're going to. Well, okay. So we move McDowell up to where Richards or Heinzelman is, I'm thinking. Okay. He activates yeah. everybody. Franklin moves one across to 41. One, yeah, yeah, that's something. So, and so with McDowell's activation, we try to move. Wait a minute. You know what? If we put McDowell. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They're never, they're never going to get enough. Put McDowell with Franklin. Wait a minute. One up to 10. Yeah. So put McDowell with Franklin. Okay. Okay. Now let's activate using McDowell. Let's activate Franklin. Okay. Here's what we say we're going to do. Okay. We're going to activate Franklin, Richardson, and Miles with McDowell. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Big roll, Todd. Big roll. Boom! Oh, baby. Okay, so we know what we want to do with Franklin. Yeah, go ahead. I'm go ahead and do it. I'm looking at something. Well, we don't even have to we don't even have to move Franklin. Franklin can just move right in there with uh well, why would you not move him into 4119 to get more flank if that matters? Maybe it doesn't matter, but you get him yeah, on that side of the way. We're gonna do we're, either way, we're gonna do an assault or a well, you want to get him across the river. Doesn't that help or not? Well, yeah, but well, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Okay. Okay. Glad I brought you along for the fight. Would it matter? Okay, real quick though. Would it matter if he was in 4019 on flanking and stuff? Well, you can't get to 4019. Yeah, you can because this little, I think this little thing here is just a creek, right? There's a unit sitting right there. Oh yeah, he couldn't. Yeah, he's gonna okay. He's gonna end up in a. All right now. Now, what did you want to do with Richardson and Miles? Command radius belonging to his command area are at fatigue level of three or less. Wait, what? Yeah, so we're yeah, so we're good. Yes. All right, we wanted to do. Oh, oh, oh wait, hold on. Patrick says, are you in the action phase now? If so, he can only move three hexes. McDowell? <laughs> there are <laughs> rules, Jeff. Uh, okay, all right. So we can't. The only thing we could have done was move to, to Tyler. But there, no, okay. So, okay, well, okay. No, all right. Do you happen to know where that is? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm not doubting you. I'm just kind of so I can kind of see where it is and read it. That this game, this game's got too many rules. It's too too limiting. Okay, I see five point two. There's all right. Well, well, we couldn't have moved McDowell up. Okay, to we could have only the farthest McDowell could have gone was to where Tyler was. Yeah. Okay. All right. So no problem. So we just we just take that role as a activation for Franklin. Okay. All right. Now, all right. So initiative. Why did we both just roll? You, know, you rolled first, so Union got it. All right. So now the only thing we can do here is Jesus Christ. <laughs> so so can Heinzelman do a grand assault or not? Heinzelman can't do a grand assault. He can only do an assault. Mm -hmm. Only a district leader can do a grand assault. Oh, gee willikers. Yeah, well, wait, hold on. Are there any points for infantry casualties? Yes, there is. Oh. There is. This is this is freaking what? Oh. We, okay, haven't, so we haven't we haven't we inflicted we haven't inflicted any right? No, we haven't on ourselves. Yeah, I don't think that counts. So, all right, so we need to we need to do an assault with Heinzelman in the cook. Oh. 
I mean, it's all we got. And then maybe maybe we take a shot if we can get the opportunity and get a good die roll and have Miles try to assault Yule across across the bridge and the river, which we know that's going to be it. And remember last time we tried to do some dumb shit like that. <laughs> well, and he's in breastworks too across a bridge. Yeah, there you go. But, but I mean, hey. Get Blinker and Davies down there and do it, you know? All right. Well, let's deal with Heinzelman first. Well, real quick, can can a leader command multiple troops to attack? They can do an assault. They just can't do a grand assault. So Right. He can only do an assault of which units is, in his hex. Okay. And we got to see how many of those units are going to participate. Damn, Tim says restart. <laughs> And um, Patrick says, yeah, he's stuck since there is nobody in range to transfer to. Could he not transfer to Ty? Oh, he can't transfer to Ty. Wait, why? He can't. He's not transferring to Tyler. He's transferring to that union, and that unit is red. So he can't transfer it to him. Oh, because he's because he's red. Okay. I think they'll, they'll correct us. At Or at a fatigue level of three or less. Good call. Yeah. So we got we got the answer in two statements from two different people and camp sawyer says well you have the historical command confusion correct well that's just jeff and i period that's us, yeah. Yeah. There's no, you know any 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 acw game would have that with us playing all right all right what are we doing jeff we're doing so, we're gonna do an assault with heinzelman all right we're gonna start there perfect all right let's do it it's our first first and maybe only battle for this game now let's see here this just, is fantastic man i'm telling you so patrick I, you probably haven't heard this but this game has ruined me on World War II games because I can't find a World War II game that gives me this much. Well, I guess you should have heard me playing ASL today. I guess I got pretty excited there. But so yeah. right there is where we're going to assault from those two units. Okay. That's all we can use. Okay. All right. And well, wait a minute. So we're going to increase their fatigue. Oh, but it, okay. We're, but they're only at three, so they can assault. At fatigue level three or less. Okay. All right. But we're going to do it. So. But they're going to get fatigued regardless. Oh, they're only at three now. So. So are, this isn't considered extended march though, right? This is an assault. So it's, they don't need yeah, this to. Is, this is combatage. Okay. Combatage. Yeah, so, so we're then, doing we're not doing a regular attack on the move. Correct. We're doing an we're doing an assault action. Okay, beautiful. All right. All right. So we fatigued them. We know the target is going to be Cook across the stream. There, there is no cavalry routine. Now we're going to roll for a command. Uh, where's the modifications for? So this is page twelve. Attack procedure: assault action only. If you want to do that. Y'all want to follow along, open your textbooks. I think I was more talking to you, Joe. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, so we got our participants. We've increased the fatigue. And now we need to do the command roll. Select the target, cavalry retreat, roll for command. Where's the freaking chart for? It's keep reading page 12, page number five. So ro roll the die. Yeah, we moved cock east of it to delay the pressure on Evans at the bridge. Which may have been a smart move by us. Oh, uh, am I rolling? How many am yeah, I rolling? We're just rolling one die looking for five or less, I believe. Here it goes. Four. Okay, but let's see. If the roll is five or less, apply any appropriate modifier to this roll C below. Assault rhyme assault roll modifier. Oh, minus two. Okay. If the active leader is a district. Nope. He's not a district leader. He's a and it would subtract. It would subtract you anyway, so we're good. All right, all right. So all next, so would that so, mean you can use both units? So yeah, the result subtract. The, oh no, you don't want you don't want that negative because that was less. So okay, so we can move it. We can do, both guys participate. All right. So now let's do our assault. We're not doing the grand assault. Can't. So we're going back to the assault procedure attack procedures. Which is step seven. Okay. Combat values. Get my little chart out. Oh yeah. Where's my where's my whiteboard? 
Yeah, that's right. You're supposed to have your whiteboard. And then my whiteboard, I'll use a piece of paper. Okay. Come on, McMurray. Do you have to be like that? <laughs> yes, we are. You, you, you have to put up with it because he's a supporting member of your channel. You can unsupport. All right, so what's the com? We got to figure out the combat value. So, I mean, it's pretty easy. It's 10 and 4. Uh, any modifiers for artillery? Uh, probably not. Because what's that rule we were talking about? If it's, um, there's only one for the Union. And there's one for the Confederates, so it's a it's a wash. Stigler's calling them out on it. <laughs> okay, um, we got to focus here. We got to focus. Um, it's rolling minus one, so that is rolling, right? Yeah, that's rolling. Or is that clear? He's clear. Okay. Cook so, is in clear. So it's minus two. Okay, hold on. We need to look at the attacker roll modifiers first. No flank. Are there any artillery modifiers? Well, no, no, no. Hold on. We got to do the. Yeah, we're not gonna. We're not fucking gonna wait a month to play this damn thing again. That, or we're not gonna do it again. All right, so we got to go back. All right, let's say determine the combat values to get the ratio. So it's freaking, it's 10 to 4, so it's 2 to 1. So on your little chart, on your little whiteboard, put plus 1. Plus 1 for the attacker? Yep. Okay. All right. And we know it's, okay. All right, we know, okay, so that takes care of that. Artillery modifiers, it's in clear terrain, and it's a one-to-one. One, -one. one Patrick, for the Confederates and one for the Union. Yeah, Patrick says no, only minus one arty since he only has one battery. That's the rule I was talking about. Oh. Yeah, where you just you just wipe it, so there's not going to be a modifier. Okay, so attacker right now is plus one. Right. So now we can go down on no flank attack, no artillery. Defenders, flanks refuse, no. Assault action, yes, so there's another plus one. Okay. Tactical modifier. What do we got there? A one against a one. Do you use the leader, right? Yeah, Heinzelman. So there, there's a wash. Okay. All right. And it's attacks right. and rain turn. Anything We're not attacking. Specific? Okay. So that's plus one. So now any defender roll modifiers? Uh, Defending across bridge, dam, ferry, or ford. Now. It's no, right? Because there's not a bridge symbol there. Oh, that's just a stream. stream. Yeah. Defending in a mountain hex, no. Defending in a hill, no. Defending across a creek. Plus one. All right. Okay. So now we have plus two for attacker, plus one for defender. Right. All right. So now, now, you, roll, now you roll the die. Yep. Two die. Yeah. It uh, Perry, it's really not that tough to do the the combat thingy after you do it once or twice it's easy just we haven't played in about a month and a half so yeah we're just trying to make sure we get everything yeah the, i'd say the i'd say the arty and flanking are the toughest things but they're not really that tough all right roll those two dice buddy all right here we go oh gee many christmas so <laughs> so the final number is seven to it, nope yeah seven to seven actually did the Yanks got two, right? Yep. So it's a zero. All right, so it's a zero. The defender's value is a four, right? So that's a big D. Wow. And the attacker was what? Ten? So it's a one D. Oh, <laughs> so again, just like what happened. Yeah. Oh, got it. <laughs> we are so bad at this. Oh, so would you like us to zoom in? Let me zoom in. Yeah, you probably do need to zoom in. I didn't think about that, so, yeah. especially the battle we're doing. So we are fighting right here with these guys against this guy. And this guy has won. 
So he's going to get a disorganized, fatigued. All right, so. Oh, what's the fatigue's three, isn't it? This disorganized fatigue, this unit strength marker is flipped to the disorganized side. Um, and it gains three fatigue is three. He yeah. gets three fatigue levels, so he's gonna go orange. No, that's one. That's Wait, what? two. That's three. Wait, he's red. He's Ford. How is he red? Because we moved him one time. Oh, okay. All right. And he it. Did that just flip him? Yeah, he's disorganized. And I guess we'll take it off the biggest unit. God damn it. So he's going to lose one. And they're going to get a big D, right? Yep. So and he's going to be red. maxed out. And he's going to be disorganized. Oh, damn it, Jeff. I really got to get better at that. And he's disorganized. So that's a point somewhere. Yeah, I got it. We just hurt the union calls right there. This this is what happened the last the last one. We hurt them big time. Anytime they attacked, they took yeah. negative point. They lost points. So it was like I can't attack as the union. All right. So let's give a quick quick brief here. Okay, so you have three forms of attack. You have your regular attack, which is a unit on the move, which is usually a single unit. Um, plus, oh, we forgot there was a flank. Okay, because the unit they don't have to participate to be in the flank. All right, so we, plus we three. They overlooked that. Okay, so that's a plus three to the union. So it would have been a plus three on the dice roll. Oh boy, so. Yeah, so it's a Cook yeah, so would it, have had to retreated. So it, it's 10 to 7. So it was a plus 3 for the attacker. It was a plus 3. Yeah, so it would have been... Okay, so let's redo that. All right, so, well, the big D... Okay, so we don't need to... Big, big, D, to big D, little R. Yeah, hold on. Let me get the... Let me, these guys, these guys were already at three, so they were going to get their fatigue, but yeah. they weren't going to be disorganized. And so and they were, and he yeah. wasn't going to lose the strength. All right. Good catch. Good catch. Thank you. Yeah, that, I feel like we've definitely failed, I think, because we, we stopped playing. Well, yeah, well, we pulled it off though. No, no, okay. I mean, it's okay. I mean, they didn't lose a point now. So he's got a retreat. Yep. All right. So then what's that? How's that work? There's a little Where's bit of our retreat charty chart, chart, chart. Uh, retreat chart. Here we go. Retreat chart. One player must retreat for the first hex entered in a normal retreat. All right. Uh, retreat follows the road, park or trail railroad into a hex more distance from the enemy unit. The hex is neither in an enemy zone of control nor enemy occupied. Now the question is: Does Evans does Patrick does Evans scratch the zone of control of the Union units by being in that hex if we retreat him down the pike? That's the question. Retreat does not fall. No, it does. Retreat is not into a hex. No, retreat is into an enemy zone of control, but not an enemy occupied hex. The retreat is in a hex. Okay, retreat is into an enemy zone of control, but not an enemy occupied retreat is into not into a hex. No. Nope. So it retreat is into an enemy zone of control, but it's not enemy occupied. The retreat is into a hex more distance from the active enemy unit than the hex retreated out of. So he would retreat here. All right. And then it would be dum, 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 zero, one. This is the, uh, to me. This is the pain in the butt part of this game. It makes sense. All of it makes sense. All right. So I'm sorry. Did he take losses going into those zone of controls? That's uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. It's the second number. What is the split for? I can't. Where's that at? Are you looking on the retreat chart? Yeah. Zero slash one dot. 
Oh, if it's along a road, it's not a manpower loss. If you use the number to the left of the slash, if the retreat route is using a road pipe trail or railroad, otherwise use number to the right. right slash. So 4019 to 4018 in your choice. That's a oh, bummer. he's got to retreat more than, yeah, shit, no, sorry, can't do that. What, what? How he's much does he have to retreat? More than one hex. So he'd have to go this way. All right, which is still going to be that. And then he would cross. What's the retreat? What's the little R? How many hexes is it? Two to four. All right, so he could go here on top of Stuart. Stuart. And they got uh, fatigue and, and advance. Yeah, the problem is they got fatigue, so now they can't attack Evans. Nope. So they're not going to take Stone Bridge. Unless we can get keys. Well, hold on. Do we want to try to get keys and Franklin? Are they can they work together or not? Um can they attack across that bridge against Evans together? No. Because they, they need a leader or yeah, they would have to have McDowell up there to do that. Keys, yeah, no. Can okay. Well, then I guess advance them in. I mean, if you're not going to have Franklin attack them or Keys attack them, yeah, I mean they're they're done regardless. So all right, so I want to do this well, before we before we move on, so that the people that are looking at this, you have three types of attack. You have attack while you're on the move, which is a single unit. You have an assault attack, which a division commander with the units that are in his hex, which is what we did, they can they can conduct an attack, but it's a quite possible that not all the units, depending on the effectiveness of the leader, will be able to make the attack. All right? We were lucky. There's only two units in there. He rolled within the effectiveness to, so that both units could attack or assault. Then you have a grand assault where you have a district commander, which McDowell, if McDowell had been up there with in this hex with Heinzelman, it was possible that all of these units are all of these units around and the units in this hex possibly could have made that attack altogether in a grand assault. So those are your three forms of combat in this game. Okay, so real quick here. Um <coughs> that stupid rolling, man. So someone's saying, like, you know, Davies is only green, blinkers green. So they we can send them down to Yule and try to attack there. My question about Keys and or Franklin is you don't you don't advance those guys because Keys could move into that stone bridge hex and you know m attack on the move, possibly. Because he'd go orange getting the end of the hex. I mean, you get in orange depending if you got a lot of movement. So I wouldn't yeah, I mean you're talking, yeah. Okay, so we were I, saying we didn't yeah, don't move them in there because it won't crowd up the hex. Well. Okay, so do we even have the option to not advance? Or do we have to advance? They may advance. Oh, it says may. Okay. All right. I like that. Wait, regard so, okay, so regardless, we've got so roll a roll in initiative. Roll initiative. And the Rebs got it. All right. So what are the Rebs going to do? Well, if we're not doing There's nothing that can happen up there because any anybody that moves up is going to get stopped right there. I mean, you could, if no. the only thing I saw seeing potentially to happening was attacking him. Yeah, let's do it. Well, no, oh no, 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 no. We don't want to because we don't want to take the risk of losing the casualty. Speaking of, well, what's the points right now? What do we say? Four, five, five. The Union would have to lose. It's a Confederate victory with five. I know. The Confederates would have to lose a lot to lose their marginal victory. They're not going to lose three steps. or No, if they lose one, it that's goes one. to six for the Union. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I don't know, man. I know. I just know how these attacks go. <laughs> that's why I'm saying I, well, I, don't, I don't think we should. I think what we should do is say the Johnny Rebs are going to pass this turn. 
Well, I, if you're going to pass, then I would like put Evans in an abbotee or something. Or, no, we're not. We're not going to pass, buddy. Old Stonewall and old Joe Johnson haven't done anything yet. Longstreet hasn't done anything yet. I tell you what we are going to do. <laughs> this will take care of our this will take care of the game right here. I'm gonna roll I already I'm, I already have the unit that I'm activating. I know what I would okay. Oh my god. I know what I would I know what I would do. <laughs> oh Jamie. Well who are you oh so you, you knew who you're activating, you just didn't tell us, right? No. Oh we can always move one hex, right? Yeah. So, Miroslav, what's up, buddy? So, see the stacking thing. All right, Patrick. So, we can always move one hex. Can this unit move into that hex under the one hex movement rule? Yeah, why not? Because it's, you know, the stacking moving into a hex that's. Um, yep. Nope. He said, yep. There we go. That just, I think that just took care of Miles. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, we could have activated Johnston and moved half a Jack, half a Johnston into that X right there with no problem. <laughs> well, right. That's what I was that's thinking. Eight, that's eight moving points in there. Plus, not only is it eight, Yule is in uh, Breastworks. Yeah, right. So Yule is now the equivalent of 10. And he's across a bridge and behind a river or whatever they want to call it. Yeah, it's a river, minor river. And the Confederates got the initiative. Oh, goodness gracious, <laughs> dude! I don't. There's no way. It's not going to happen. We can't get McDowell. So now I feel like okay, we made a bad choice with McDowell. I think. Dude, if you wanted to, you could activate Johnston and move, like, Johnston's a district leader. Does that mean he can activate multiple, like, he could activate Longstreet and whoever? I don't think he can activate. Well, I mean, they kind of did in the first, I mean, they had Oh, no, to... because he's a Shenandoah, right? Yeah. But... Or does that matter? I, I think it does. Jackson okay. or Johnson can't activate Potomac. Yeah, troops. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, you would think he could. So, but who who does like eleven North Carolina and eighth Louisiana belong to? Anyway, my thinking is, I mean, if you just wanted to just pound this home, you could like activate Johnson and move. I don't know Barto in with Longstreet. You could just like divide up all these guys and put like. You put Jackson in there or move him across the river. I mean, there's just there's just no way. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean. Well, the only thing I will say is Evans is sitting up there with no breastworks. You could breastwork him. You could flank, refuse flank. I, they're not going to flank him. There's no one. Getting, I mean, no, but the union can take two pops at him. Do the do the red fatigue guys count as flanks? Because you because we he said it was a flank plus three, so you can tell by looking at the chart real quick. Units on two different straight across, so it would have had to have been you got a flank plus three on that. Okay. Yep. Oh no, that's a different yep. <laughs> yeah, the dice did tell me there, Stig. Merslov, he played this thing up in Gettysburg when he was up there. He was playing it with Lee and them. Um. Okay, I. I okay, I, Miles doesn't have a chance. There's no way. Well, then I guess get Evans. You know, in defense. Yeah, well, yeah, what's what, what's he going to do? He's just going to go to... Yeah, but two, one. All right. Initiative. And fatigue him. Oh, yep, yeah, sorry. 
Why am I so bad at that? Okay. I'm initiative. You're not. Just excited. Go ahead. There you go. So I guess you're you're God. Only problem is Keys has got to move across clear terrain. Yeah. Hey, don't give up, man. Player morale. Player morale. It's just three. Here we go. Activating keys. <laughs> You're not even gonna have enough movement. <laughs> well, now it's a waste if you move him down there, because then Franklin won't be able to get in there and tack across the bridge. Uh, well, I mean, he could still. The keys can still roll again and move across. Well, he can move his one hex. So, no, he's no. Oh yeah, you already fatigued him, right? Yeah, okay. Extended march. I did. I rolled for it. I got a three. Yeah. Initiative. Four and four tie. Yanks Confederates. Or, uh, Confederates. There's, they don't really, I mean, there's really nothing they need. Yeah, to. I'm going to do this. Wait a minute, who's that underneath of, um, oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Good call. Nord, it goes there bad. It's not good for the union. Uh, Todd, I mean, uh, Todd and uh, Wardrobe and Hexy do not. Uh, they Lincoln has fired us now four scenarios in a row. He said, Get, would you please leave? He's put, he's put us in the, we're now the Russian uh, delegation. Confederates again. So you're going to finish off the breastworks on Evans? Well, he's just going to go. I mean, it's not finishing it, but sure. Didn't you just roll initiative and one again for the Confederates? I did, but he's not going to finish his thing. He's going to um, just go to A once, and I still one and a half. Oh, okay. Initiative. I'm just Union, walking. go. You do something. What? what the hell you want me to do? I want you to <laughs> make something happen, bro. All right. Uh, we're going to activate keys. We, we don't have no choice, man. <laughs> so he's only at a three, or fatigue of three, so we'll fatigue him. We're going to roll. Ah! Uh! <laughs> well, well before you do anything else roll for extended march oh god you're gonna oh all right them, well them power rolls i got all right so we're gonna oh this is gonna suck when there's no artillery for evans no artillery for you i don't worry about it so it's we're talking Oh my god, he's we say he's is he he's doubled for ratio or he's time and a half. So was he three and a half? Yeah. All right, so that's only gonna be it'll only be a one to one. You got your little whiteboard? Uh just FYI, unless specified by the scenarios, no build fortification actions until 1864, only during recovery. Oh shoot. Wait, what? We if that's the case, we've been doing that wrong in every scenario. Have we? Oh well, well it's too late now. Oh, wait, no, because that might affect this attack. Well, yeah, hold on. Well, did we have, but wasn't there a special rule that we were... Entrenchments, page 19. Yeah, because I thought we had this discussion when we played the first scenario. Yeah, hold on. Entrenchments procedure in 1861, all green alike. If unit entrench is placed in habit... Yeah, so I think you can do it in 1861. Yeah, because it's only breastworks. They weren't, yeah. Yeah, for all green alike. So yeah, yeah. I thought so because I remember we read that when we played the first scenario. Okay. All right. So we've got zero for combat. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Let me uh, get the board out here. Hold on. So bloop 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 scratch. Okay. So um, uh, attacker defender. Okay. Attacker defender. And there's. I'm pretty sure there's no flank on this one. Well, I got flank. Ref we got put frankly refused on there, but so oh. that, does, that doesn't negate it a hundred percent, though. Yeah, but there's there's no flank anyhow because this is a mobile, and there's only one unit adjacent. Um, defenders flank refused. Wait, You're saying we had this discussion before. 
You're saying Porter and Burnside don't. Where do you see? Oh, he's on the other side of him. I didn't see that. Yeah. All right. So he would be on the other side. Why does that chart say flanks refuse plus one plus two? Yeah, I never. I that is a tough one for me. I don't. Where, oh, the attack. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand that. Patrick, why does it say defenders flanks refused under the attackers die roll modifiers? It says plus one or plus two. I mean, because to me right now, if it wasn't flanks room, it'd be a plus four. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, so maybe that's removing. He said, read the first paragraph under the entrenchments. I have got to go to the bathroom. God damn it. <clears throat> Are there? Yeah. Under and read that first paragraph under entrenchments. Okay. Yes, sir. Doing it now. No, I'm not doing it now because I'm finding it. Entrenchments. Units may construct entrenchments in the recovery phase and in games. In oh, and in games taking place in 1863 or later in the action. Oh, so we have done that wrong in every scenario, then I think. Okay, so he can't do that. Then have we built for anyone else? I don't think we have in this particular game, and I, I think this Huntoon shouldn't have that on there. We forgot to take it off when he left, so so. You can still remove you can still refuse flanks though, right? If there is no flank and you have a flanks refuse, the attacker gets a plus one DRM bonus. I'm sorry. So what what do we do wrong? Well, well, hold on. There's a couple things going on here. So yes, Patrick's correct. Of course he is. So we can't you can, so we have been doing it wrong in every scenario, Jeff. What 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 we've been doing wrong? Uh entrenching. So I'm um, let me take a guess. Let me take a shot in the dark here. Because most of these units on the river were already in breastwork two or B2. My yeah. my thing is is Patrick's gonna tell us that, but we're not allowed to build any. Yes, that's correct, unless you're in the recovery phase. Okay. So it, the first sentence in the paragraph says, you may build them in the recovery phase and in games taking place in 1863 or later in the action phase. Now, the procedure for building entrenchments in the action phase for games in 1864, 1865, and in 1863 is described in this. The procedure for building entrenchments in the recovery phase is described below. So yeah, we read it wrong and we did not do it. Okay, so the, take take whatever it is off of Evans. I did, and he would not even be fatigued. Well, he would be fatigued because he refused flanks. Now, then, now let's look at the flanks. If there is no flank and you have a flanks refused, the attacker gets a plus one DRM bonus. If the if there Yeah, I can oh, understand. that makes okay. That makes sense, actually. So he's got there are no flanks because he doesn't have nothing on either side of him. Jeff, he's got Porter and Hunter or Pun, Porter and no, Burns. I'm talking about Evans. I'm talking about Evans didn't have any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marislav. I prefer the flanks refusal in GBACW. <laughs> all right, so wait, uh, all right. We, I'll tell you what, Patrick, you are going to have to find some time to get on with us so that we can understand that. I think there's probably two or three rules in this game that we don't quite. Yeah, that, that would, that would be cool. And it would maybe be a good, I mean, Patrick got lots of good learning sessions. That's what he'd probably say. Just go watch my videos, you nerm nongs. Yeah. But, yeah. but that would be kind of cool. It'd be a learning in. Well, in the game, I mean, it, we, so we've played, this is the fourth scenario and I, I thought, we were rolling pretty smooth, which I still think we were, but 
now understanding this the uh the building thing i mean that's jeff that's huge that the the so that would make that would make the confederates not quite as tough because we were we were building them right i mean right stig i don't have a problem with line of sight and gbacw does anybody else <laughs> stop <laughs> <laughs> you two, you two, go take your GBA CW conversation. Patrick is in here telling us Evans is currently. Okay, so, here. so the Wait. plus one or plus two? What is uh, explain to you? What does that mean? So look at look at Patrick's thing. Evans is currently using the flanks refused. It right. will cut the flank DRM in half. Right, but what so, does plus one or plus two mean? Well. Um, I'm saying, I don't the chart is throwing me off. Yeah, well then we don't need to read the chart. We need to actually look in the look in the book here. I think what it's saying is if you have a plus four, like right now, I think we're at a plus four. Flank refuse right. is going to take it to a plus two. If they were a plus three or plus two, it would take it to a plus one. It would take it to a plus one. I, I assume okay. plus one would just take so, it. He's flanked, so we're going to get a flanking bonus of plus two because he's refused. Correct. All right, so right now we have a plus two for the attacker. Yep, so hold on. Attack, defense, we have a plus two. Okay, next. And it is a haste. It's, oh, God. There is it's something haste, to be said. It's a hasty it's a attack. Okay, so can you explain to me real quick, prepared, hasty, and column and route of route? So prepared is what? How, where is that defined here? It's how many movement points you got to burn up. We only had one movement point. <laughs> no, I understand. Is that, where is that? Oh, oh here it is. It's down here, attack summary. Yeah, attack summary. So we're getting a minus one on that. All right, so, okay, so we're at a plus one right now. Okay. And then we have tactical modifier of zero to one. So there's another minus one. Perfect. Okay, great. Now, defender. Defending across a bridge, dam, ferry, or fort is plus two for the defender. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get smoked. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> so what do we got on both sides? We have a uh, zero modifier for the attackers and a plus two for defender. And here we go. But, oh, oh we, we, smoke show. <laughs> hold on. We didn't do the ratio modifier. Yeah, we did. It was zero, one to one. Okay, and what's the smoke? Sh oh, okay. So eight to four. So it's a minus four, correct? Damn. So minus four. Nothing happens to the defender in that case. Imagine huh. that. Unless they have 38 to... Jeff, imagine having 38 to 50 attack values. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we will kill so many people. <laughs> so a five on a minus four. Say goodnight, Union. So it's 2D. Big D. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So Union Points now just got minus two. You, you take care of that part? I'm, I'm doing it right now. Yeah. I mean, you you do it. I'm putting the points down here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and they're fatigued. Nothing happens to Evans. He's just sitting there. He's just all he goes. I don't even he goes. I don't even care if I need to build Abbott because I'm just going to sit here and just blow him away. What I need you to roll there was a 6-1, okay. Jeff. What? Okay. Jeff. <laughs> Two friction points return. <laughs> so I always wanted the big D, though. He didn't have to retreat, did he? Yeah. Okay, you know what? We're going to pretty much call this one right here. <laughs> because there's, not, there's no damn way. No, I, I, I'm trying to not do play, player fatigue and, like, give up early, but I... I don't. It's not going to happen. There's and, no way. And anytime we attack with the Union, we lose. Yeah. So now, how many casualties we have? What for the Union? Two casualties there. Just two casualties. So we went. So it's five points. Now we got two taken away. So they're down to three points, and that's a Confederate marginal victory. Yeah. So the so the Union would say we're giving up before we make it a Confederate decisive victory just by losing points. Unbelievable. 
Unbelievable. Okay, so big, huge thing that we have messed up in all the games. I would say we've gotten flanked correct on all these I, I, based on what just happened there. What right. we've gotten wrong is defense building. Okay, okay, right. So we can't uh, – it's a particular phase. and I Yeah, it's recovery, and that's when we – that's when you that's when you roll and they get their fatigue back and stuff, right? Right. Yeah, well we click that one button up top that does everything for us. That's yeah. during that phase. Yeah. And I think I think I won yeah, that's when we should be doing well, it. Here's the plain and simple of this. This is scenario four. Okay. So I think okay, right. We got the building thing. We got that wrong. Um, we almost missed a flank thing, but I I, I I think in our previous ones we got the flank thing right. Like I say, we've had such a break from playing it that yeah, no, I think we got it right. Bias. But so that I'm I was on that. I'm glad Patrick was on here. I'm glad Tim was on here. Catching oh, it up there. oh, 100. percent No, awesome. I mean super but helpful. Four games that we've played, and we have to what most people would say have just cussed and cussed and cussed about how brain racking these damn scenarios are. And you and we keep coming back because there's so much damn fun. Well, so everybody and Jeff, <laughs> I guarantee Patrick's played this one on his channel and probably played it a couple times, but at least one time. It would be fun to now, and I've done this a couple times. Go watch what they do and see. Okay, what's what's happening there? Because you know they played it at least once. And this one, I Patrick can probably crank out in like forty minutes. Yeah. So, and we're okay. All right. Well, all right. So, all right. So, those of you that are still out there, which is quite a good number. No, we got a great view. Should now. we're going to play? We we're scheduled to play tomorrow night. We're not going to play this scenario again. <laughs> no, but I thought, I thought that's what you were going to ask him. Okay, go ahead. Let me ask y'all a question. Do you all wish to concede, or do, do you all wish for us? to continue to play this stuff live or should we shut it down live and never show our faces with this on stream ever again? What do y'all say? Should we continue to play these things live and hopefully we build to a better understanding as we go? That's one vote from Stigler and he doesn't even, yeah, he's all that matters. Yeah. Patrick homework, watch your videos. Patrick's Patrick's sitting there saying, God, do I really want these guys? Perry, <laughs> definitely live. Play it live, otherwise I cannot toss out witty remarks to make you all laugh. Dale, play it live. <laughs> yep, last live. Even Patrick says yes, live. Play it. All right, we got it. It's done. It's voted. All right, so we're, we're golden with that then. All right. Okay, so, all right. From... The initial setup of this game. Well, we're gonna we're gonna review it real quick while we're on. So it it's it's apparent that your only aggressive option as the blue coats in this game is pretty much the option that was that McDowell attempted late, I will say, that attempted in the actual fight, and that was to skirt around through Sudley Springs, Sudley Springs Four, Sudley Ford. And with the looks of the setup of this game with the Confederates stacked along Bull Run, that was the only option. You weren't going south, and there's not enough time in a one-day game, a one-turn game. So we attempted to do that, and we epically failed on the night march and the any movement rolls that we took. Uh, okay. But you're saying – I mean, I, I I don't know how you, you can't say you. I mean, you epically failed, but I feel like you. This game is designed to work around those low moves. I mean, I don't know. I'd be interested in Patrick's another Marislav, whoever else has played this game a lot. It's kind of like Combat Commander, which is another game Patrick plays. People work around those bad card pulls and the bad die rolls, and they win, right? I think. I mean. I mean, because if it's just down to the die rolls and then it is almost not worth playing because it's like, well, I roll bad, so I can't win. I mean, is that or is that just how maybe that's just the way it is? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you, you can't control that, really. 
I, I am curious. I mean, you're right. If you just roll a bunch of ones and you can't move, then yeah, you're not going to win. Yeah, but, we, uh, that's just not. I mean, we needed we needed a big burst in those night marches. Uh, it seems like it. Uh, I'm a little. I got to really read up on that night march situation. I, I guess the what is the advantage of them is that the union gets three free moves, but then you're you can't really move very far because you bunch up. Right. Yeah. 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 And moving into each other with good size, you know. And I mean, these brigades were actually, I guess, decent size for early war. So. But trying to get around over there, and we just, I mean, I'm amazed that, well, honestly, okay, so we discussed when we started this that we weren't going to have troops coming from the valley. We never did bring Elsie down, by the way. You couldn't. The, yeah, that we were never going to have troops coming from the valley because they are they were already here. Right. And I thought to myself that that was going to, initially, that was going to make this a lot tougher. And I was... You know, where we failed in the scenario previously, we never got into Gainesville, which turns out it's only one victory point anyhow. And we got thrown out of Groveton. And as long as we held the stone bridge, which we did in this game as the Confederates, we we didn't have to be aggressive with Beauregard other than to get units next to Tyler sitting in Groveton. <laughs> yeah um i mean marislav says the move roll system has always been a controversy in the system i mean i love the move roll system i mean i think it's fantastic i think that's what makes us laugh and get excited about yeah i mean it's just it's awesome because i mean i just so i just finished reading um foot's you know first volume and it's just chaos man i mean everyone's got an opinion all the leaders i mean they're just like what the heck and and it just simulates so much of the set stuff i mean that you read about, well, that I read about. I mean, I haven't read a bunch, and it's only one guy's, you know, history, but I don't know. So, Patrick, Marislav, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, well, yeah, first just, off, Patrick, is this game, it, it, it we're not, and we're going to go dig now. You know, we are. Have you ever won this from the Union side? Or does anybody know anybody that's won this from the union side? Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yes, but I have no idea, of course. Stigler. Well, I mean, I, I still say though that you would have had to have had better roles on yeah. the initial moves. I mean, even a, a a four or five, you know, in one of those could have been great. Yeah, yeah. Our problem was is the first group that moved moved on a two. So there was no place for other troops to move around them. Yeah, I mean, and it's not like you got a lot of places to move. Spoilers. <laughs> um, we sure yeah. didn't have to do much work with the Confederate forces. We didn't have to do much work at all. Yeah, see, and Stigler. So I, I even love that rolling for initiative thing. I just, I, I just everything, everything I've so far, I just love about this game. I, I think I probably am less frustrated with it because Hexy and I are working on it together. So you know, it's like I'm getting my butt whooped every time. But, <clears throat> but I, I've got to think if I ever play this game seriously opposed to somebody, I just got to take that and that attitude in. It's like, hey man, you just got to roll, roll with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Like I say, you know, our first three dice rolls for. But but again, first, Jeff, the, there, there are things we can do to control, like not moving Heinzelman and that crew in, not moving them in there, so that Keys could at least attempt it, right? I mean, there's there's a lot of things you can do to control right. the order you move guys, so you don't stuff up. We, we you and I have been doing decent at that. Maybe we didn't do it right in the night march this time. Not right, but well, probably. well, and what if we had? See, because remember we had. No, it was Evans. What if we had slammed straight ahead and attacked Evans at the Stone Bridge initially with a larger force instead of trying to go around the outside? 
Yeah. So maybe, maybe, talk, maybe concentrate on Groveton and Stone Bridge and don't worry about Gainesville. Cause think about it. Gainesville's worth one. Stones Bridge is worth what? Two? Well, we needed six points. That's for sure. Well, if it's worth two and Groveton's worth, well, eight, and then you get a bunch of Union troops around Groveton, then you're stopping the Confederates from getting around it. Right. So maybe that's something to try there. Not don't worry about Gainesville because it's worth one. So what if you, I mean, look, the chance of getting to me, the chance of getting two sixes, wait, you just did roll a six for initiative. That's interesting. So that would have been the second one. So the next one you could activate. What's his name? You know, it's funny is I, I, I look at this, this map and this over and I grew up in that area and I'm still not far from that area. And I remember going to the battlefield and, you know, reading as much as I can. Well, you know, not as much lately, but in my younger years. And then seeing it laid out on a one on a beautiful map with understandable counters and text on the counters and knowing who all the players are and realizing how potentially dominant the position along Bull Run was for the Confederacy. And, of course, they were focused on the main route there where the railroad is coming through Union Mills in the bottom half, the Orange and Alexander Railroad. Yeah. It, you and how potentially strong that position really, really, really is. And understanding, I don't think that McDowell's, McDowell's plan was not bad in, in, histor, in the historical sense of how it actually happened. McDowell was 24 hours late or 24 to 48 hours late. He, his, he wanted to activate, he wanted to execute this thing a day and a half or two days before, I believe. And he did, I don't remember what the reason was. I was reading about it the other day, but he didn't do it. And we just played the scenario under that same circumstance from what I can see. And the scenario that we played before, this was the opportunity for McDowell to execute that plan earlier. And I think we had a better shot in the first scenario than we did in this one. Uh, Nor these are the most of the units are brigades um, laid out with divisional commanders, except for with the Confederate ones, you had two two district commanders. So, and then what are these strength points? Uh, a quick two. Uh, that's a good question. Good question. I don't know. So why did I think it was 200 people per number? Yeah, so you would think, too. Okay, so we just, other than the casualties, let's take the casualties away. It was, what we say, five points? Yeah. You're talking one point. You can't, we've not blown out any of these scenarios. Well, no, maybe, wait, no. Nah. Oh, I the think first a, one we did, didn't we? I think a couple of them we did. Yeah, definitely the first one. Yeah, but the last two were no blowouts. Yeah, that's that's true. So there's a lot of balance to the game, and you know, plus two. You're uh, well, I don't know about the previous setup, but the setup for this one here, this is you're this is historic. You're given the historic setup to start this thing. So, yeah. five hundred men per infantry and one point one five miles per hex. 500 men per infantry. So so for each strength point, it's 500 men, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that makes it about 2,000 men in that, Franklin, that one brigade there, so. Um, so, and, and I think it's also probably important to remember is that th this is really, I, I think, and you and I have not played it, again, Patrick, Miroslav, and whoever else is on here has played it, this really shines when you do the campaign, right? Because then you're... What's that? We'll get to that one day. Yeah, because I because then all the stuff comes into play. You've got more units to mess with. It's like a small ASL scenario or any small scenario. Man, your dice are going to throw you off because you've only got like five guys and you lose two, you're done. It's two fifths of your units. Here, same thing. If your dice are bad, you're, they're going to even out. But here, on one turn, I mean... Yeah, you're, I, I can concede that your bad die rolls can hurt you. But if this was a campaign game, you're going to have one a turn. Is a, is a turn a week? 
I feel like it turns a week. No, this was a day. Remember? Oh, that's true. There's a turn a day. It's a day, yeah. They're one day Oh, look at that. Look at Stig's comment. I know. I hear it. I saw it. He's got the old Stonewall Jackson's way. I still got the uh, shit. I sold most of them the other, like a couple weeks ago, but I still got, I got Gettysburg left. I've got uh, the Chancellorsville one from Avalon Hill left. And um, I've got the two rebels in the White House. So. All right, so let's let's talk about this real quick. It I don't I the you know the discussion GBACW or GCACW. I think part of that's just kind of what you want to model more. So to me, it's like um, I don't know. I wouldn't compare this to OCS in that way, but it's like or uh, OCS or something like that versus ASL. Which to me, I'm not saying GBACW is as complicated as ASL. It's just the only thing I've got a reference to but you just get down in the weeds and that tells you a narrative like that narrative I had today in my ASL game was incredible. Well, this is, to me, this is a different narrative. I mean, this is like troops moving around the. Yeah. Yeah. The only, I think the only, the only, com, the only common ground that I see between this and, okay. So we know that OCS and there's other systems, but OCS and, and this, they're both operational. And I think the only other thing that they share in common ground would be, uh, key points on the battlefield because I mean this whole scenario right here until it was time to till we realized it was time to pull teeth was to try to maneuver the union around to get those key points which yeah. I thought we did I mean yeah it's a it's a different narrative and it, it it's like reading a book that kind of talks like you know those books I bought that are kind of high level and you're showing that you're showing the arrows and the guys moving around versus like I mean, it, it seems like the narrative you get in GBACW is pretty incredible, you know? Yeah. You get that reg, is it regiment or something? They break or that brigade and you're like, oh my gosh, here goes Bob's brigade. <laughs> I mean, it's like you, you can see the guys breaking. Right. Right. And here you're, it's, I don't know. It. If, do you have more control in GBACW? Um, ooh. Well you think you do until until a leader fails you um i think one of the interesting things in gbacw is you have a poor leader that has a negative effectiveness rating and all of his subordinate elements are within his command range because of his poor ability it costs them <clears throat> so they they get punished right off the bat because their leader's within their command range and he's a bad leader. So, okay. Do you get what I'm saying though? Like you, you kind of have, yeah, I don't know. I guess, I, I guess that's a question to, well, I don't know. Oh, well, thank you. Um. Well, okay. So Stigler, one thing I've heard again, Someone else will have to speak to this because I haven't obviously played it. So, so some people do. So talking about Gettysburg, because that's very well known. Everyone knows about it. Even I, I, I don't really know it, but I know of it. That Gettysburg does not necessarily happen when you play the Gettysburg game in this, right? Because you're, you flank around. You like, you never, you never meet in Gettysburg. Maybe you can, but I thought, I thought, and so I, I think some people like that are really stickler not Stigler, but Stickler for the rules or for some sort of history. Like you, you don't even have to fight in Gettysburg. You can just go around or I don't know what, they do. I mean, Patrick or somebody has to speak to that, but. Well, you're not going to get the day of battle decisions, you know, like a Gettysburg or uh, honestly, this thing here was closer to playing a day of battle type game. than I think the Gettysburg one would be in this, because I know they have a scenario where, where because I watched those guys up there playing it in Gettysburg, uh, where all the units are pretty much stacked right there in the area of Gettysburg. And then I think I saw a couple other scenarios where they were moving in on the pikes and everything. But right. you, you're Stig just not going to get that day of battle, you know, the well, decisions that are made on the battlefield itself. Well, right, but Stigler's got it here. Like maybe the battle happens at Pipe Creek or another town or city nearby because that's where you meet. You don't meet at Gettysburg because maybe that Gettysburg's not the best place to meet or whatever. Right. 
I had the Battle of Westminster, PA. So like that, right? I mean, I, so and and so I do like what Stigler says, like up in that comment. I can see well, here. I guess I can click on it and show everybody what I'm talking about. I think I can click on it. Hold on. Can I do that? Yeah. So that's telling that story like you're talking about. Good point. Um, Perry, uh, no, no, GCACW and Line of Battle are, Line of Battle would compare more to great battles of the American Civil War, not GCACW. Um, God, the only, I, you know, I've only played, the only other game I've played that resembles this is the Army of the Heartland. Oh, what's that? Never even heard of that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You saw me play it. You saw me play that. That's that one that a lot of people won't touch it because they think the rules are jacked. I mean, the rules are too hard to understand. Right. But they're not. It's a great game. Yeah, but it's because you're so intelligent. I thought you were going to say because I'm so pretty, but okay. No, I'm not going to lie like that. Uh, yeah, I got news for you, and I'm going to say every time this comes up, I'm going to say it every time. If you have this game and you haven't played it, you're missing. You're missing out. There you go. Say that again. It's about the uh, so Nordic's asking what game in the GCACW series is the newest title. We have a lot of people out in here that can answer that. Is Under it Richmond Under Richmond? Two. Under Richmond 2. Yeah, just one of the biggest ones out there. With the Petersburg campaign added into it. Yeah, and my name's in the book. Yeah, that's right. Todd proofed it. Yeah, so it sucks. Don't uh, You can blame me. I, I feel like I don't know. I'd have to go look at the MMP site to see. I feel like there's another one available too that's smaller that maybe. Yeah, the Hood Strikes North. Yeah, that's a small box. I don't know one if it's battle. any. I don't know if the battles are any good, but I own it. Yeah. So, right. and, and that's probably just a little bit more value. But hey, Nordic man, it's just money. Buy them both. Yeah, Patrick's right. Uh, Hood Strikes North is the newest title. On to Richmond was the reprint. Worth it at over two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I mean. Our, we're we're gonna get to well, we we're gonna be because we're going in sequence. Well, okay, so there this is the the next one is our last scenario, Jeff. Before we yeah, go to advance. Then, then I think we jump over to that box to play some of the so you don't want to go you don't want to go advanced yet. You want to stick to the yeah, game. I'm not I'm not no. We need I when you and I are playing this and we're not having to look at the book and, and more and cry to Patrick life. and everyone else. Oh Patrick help us. No, eight, uh, Andre Richmond has 62 and 64. Here, here, Nordic. I've got, there's a, bunch, there's a bunch of unboxings, but here, let's just look at there that. It is. Big mm. box, big, big box. Okay, hold on. I know that was disgusting. Sorry, everybody. Hey, Stigner, should I take my last chance for victory out back and set it on fire? What do you think? So, April to July of 1862, the Peninsula Campaign. All right. It's uh, so this book is 64 pages, but that's not there's charts and pictures and stuff. Of course, Patrick, you, Patrick you already had have you already had your hands on any of the Basel stuff for Thunder in the Mississippi? Look at that. Yeah, I'll just keep showing while you guys are talking here so he can see your normal oh, chart. I love, I love Dean Essex. Normal. Now, look. So you have another campaign, May to June of 1864. So the cool thing about this box is you get a nice spread of the war and how it's different. Like Jeff and I are experiencing just like piddly stuff, man. Like no artillery, five, the leaders are just nasty, terrible. So this would be cool because in one box you can kind of compare. Maybe it's that way in the other ones too, but oh, rope strong one. So that first book was, I told you, 64 pages. This book is 72 pages. <laughs> it's it's freaking incredible, man. And then you got the Petersburg campaign they added in. So, but hold on. The last, I mean, so many, I can't even tell. The Game is History by Ed Beach starts on page 66. So six pages of The Game is History. Boom. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, what else is in this box? The Petersburg campaign. Yeah, three campaigns. This goes to the near the end. Look at that. Look, at, look you even get a picture of a, a modern dude. Oh, is, he, I hope, is he not something? I hope something didn't happen to him. Anyway, um, 
more art history and and it's so much just your acw nerd so many great oh i'm sorry that's 64 more pages so what is that 180 pages i mean i haven't even cracked the counters on any of these yet i'm afraid to to be honest with you i don't know how i'm even going to organize this yeah it actually it's quite easy to organize yeah um, these, yeah these games are not bad at all to organize frankly i think it's the hardest thing is all the system counters now that box i will admit that is that's one of the tougher boxes because you got three years of the war in there to separate out that's <laughs> true you know and so I, I will tell you nordic and i i don't know how, the guys who have a lot of experience with this will tell you this gets pretty squirrely it can playing it live because of the system like marking your fatigues and your things there's there's ways to control that I would like to do that. I'd like to play it live. Ultimately, what we want to do, play it live, is we want uh, uh, McMurray and J Todd, me, to go to Jeff's house, go tour some battlefields, and then play some of this stuff. Or maybe we would play Blind Sword. You know, that'd be so McMurray would have that too. And I'd look at look at the turn track. I think McMurray could play this game. I really do. Oh, I I do too. There's yeah, there is no doubt he would. Look at that. Look how many. Just a turn. This is a periodical chart. Look at it. Look at this. God, boy, boy, when we get down that road. Jeff, look, turn 296. <laughs> looks like a wallpaper display card. <laughs> and here's the thing that helps you keep track of the forces. Yeah, we have, we'll get the work. Well, we don't have to worry about that in this, but no, uh, I mean, playing, playing the game on the table. Yeah, there you go, Stig. So no, what's the uh, what's the we got? You said we have one scenario. Oh, the run when they're running away to Washington D.C. Uh huh. And it's three turns. And we'll do that one. We'll start that one tomorrow night. Yep, we'll do it. So tomorrow night, fellas, it's going to be very similar. We'll start out kind of just figuring out the rules. Um, so Nordic, what I've noticed, so all those campaign books and all those things and like. The victory conditions, there's like 13 different victory conditions. That's not every scenario. There are special rules for year and, you know, location and stuff. It just takes a, it's not too bad, but the the, the main core rules are consistent. Um, but, you know, like, can you build entrenchments? Uh, what can you, but it, I'm telling you what, man, I trust that these guys have studied the history and that they're replicating it because they, they, they love the history. So I, I would think you would. I mean, I, I can't find stuff because I don't know the history, but. And then just for your sake, uh, Nord. So and then here's Hood Strikes North. Just a cute little little guy. I just love the covers, man. I do the boxes, the boxes and the maps and the counters. <laughs> the, 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 it, it's state of the art, top notch stuff, I think. Even the player aids are awesome, man. Look, a receipt. So I'll get his address. Don't worry, I got it. I'll send it to y'all. Oh crap! Let's show my address. No, oh, whatever. So there's now there's in this game there's only this. So in some ways that's nice. Richard, don't you worry, buddy, because GBACW is still my number one game or system. So Nord in this so this one has eight scenarios, eight basic scenarios. And then you have advanced. Now, the cool thing about advanced is you get, so you get armies, you kind of start messing with that. You get random events. You get winter, in this case, this one, you get winter weather. You get Union Cavalry mounts, death of Claiborne, which is cool. I did want to ask that question. Actually, I do want to ask that question, uh, leaders. Uh, you get substitute units, Union force, railroad movement. It becomes a thing more supply. Now, supply becomes a thing, which I think is pretty cool. That's why I think a campaign would be interesting. And then you can like burn railroad stations. Oh, it's crazy. Then you get reinforcements and that kind of thing and exiting the map. So basically, and then, so there's only one advanced scenario. So it's like a, you get like eight small scenarios to learn the game basics. And the cool thing is, as you've seen, the basic ones put in some of the advanced rules like railroad movement and stuff like that. And then, then you just play the advanced one. So that's uh, cool. I did want to ask about, um, map gazetteer i love it when there's pictures of the real thing 
What about leaders dying? So at listening to that foot book, there's a lot of talk about, you know, I don't know who. Todd Reed died in the battle. <clears throat> and leaders can't, I don't, leaders don't die in this. Is that, do leaders die? I saw that one about Claiborne. Can leaders die in the campaign? Or maybe, maybe these leaders didn't die and maybe, you know what I mean? But they did. Some of them, these did, I don't know. Talk to me about that. Cause that was a huge thing or was it the lower level leaders that were dying Jackson died Stewart died all right so can someone tell me about that because <clears throat> that's a huge thing and those guys are dying it kind of impacted the morale of the army for a little bit but you can't die in here I mean I guess if Jackson's whole unit dies they do they do oh you got me now boy kind of thought that was gonna come <laughs> woohoo Okay, right. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it does happen. So it happens in the advanced game. Okay, cool. That That's all I needed to hear, Patrick. That'll even... Oh, doggone it. it. Again, this is freaking ruined me on World War II games because I'm like... Oh, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, Noble Knight, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> you got all of the GCAC. Hey, hey, Stigler. So just this is for you, buddy. So you know that Todd and I both have your game on pre-order, which I'm I do. hoping you're going to tell us we're going to be seeing that here before long. Yeah, like I've been next following week. your little treads on Facebook. But so we're having a discussion last night about the future of the things we're going to do, and we got to talking about three dog. And finally, I had to stop Todd and say, "You do realize I ordered two copies of that, right? I will, because see." He's got your game on order, which is going to get him in the boat. I mean, I'll be yeah. honest. I'm mainly doing that to support Stig. I, 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 I didn't even know if for I had now. That. that's his. That's what he's saying for now. I'm, I'm just saying because I, it's a lot, lot there, and I got a lot of yeah. But I mean, obviously, playing it would give him a, uh, would be more. Uh, There's not enough more. people that stream or video. And I mean this, there's a lot of people that take pictures and write little notes on Facebook, but there's not enough players shooting video or streaming GBACW. We need to get another one in here. <laughs> you will, buddy. You will, Stig. Your game is, I think your game, when people get it in their hands and they start playing it, it's going to change the numbers of players for GBACW. I have a first edition with all of the maps. Yeah, he's. I think he's saying he'll sell. He'll trade you the new one for the old one. No, he because he. <laughs> yeah, he wants to give me the old one and for me to give him one of the new ones. <laughs> oh, oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. GCACW lessons for Gringo lessons. What's that mean? Gringo. Gringo's the. Mexican War part of GBACW. Yeah, no. I've got those. Never played them. Probably never will. But I've got them. Oh, you want to learn how to play Gringo, Patrick? Ah, uh, efficiency and activation, right up my alley. That's the that's the one thing you've got to really, really master in playing GBACW. <laughs> Nordic, he's trying. Come on, Nordic. Just, just calm, just calm down, Nordic. Anyway, yeah, this um, again, this is what we do after. So, Tony, I'm sure Tony left a long time ago because he's a responsible boy and he went to bed. But this is so we joked about being all with our bandoliers and that's all we're wearing. But we're, but this is what Jeff was talking about last night. This is what we do after these games. When you guys aren't here, we're just going like, but what about what? What about? Shit, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys have participated, and I really appreciate you guys sticking around and having this conversation with us because this is this is what we're talking about. This is so fun. Yeah, it, it is. It's amazing. We just want to talk it to death. Well, I mean, if y'all just if you just listen to the way we you, – you, what you all heard tonight with us co op in this game is exactly what, you, what Todd and I hear between each other when we're not streaming this. The game is just – when I say this game is, is – rattles your brain i don't mean that in a bad way i no. really don't <laughs> i really do not we no, we no. actually get to the point where one of us wants to do something and the other's like no no well let's do this no we should do this i think 
and that's just the way and it, it's it's fun that's it's this is the way cuz i'm not much for playing against people uh todd dabbles a little bit with some stuff out there in in missouri but uh this is the way we have fun with it and it works yeah this is um i was thinking about this actually while i was uh making eating my dinner so i've been playing i'm playing in a huge gts game and we meet every other week or every week or something or every other week and play online and then we're going to meet in a couple weeks and play live for four days the crete gts game and it's super fun and i'm playing with uh, ty who knows the rules super I'd, I'd say he knows the rules like patrick knows the rules for gcacw he's written in the magazine he loves the the system so he he's kind of the leader of the the game because he knows the most than anybody and then i'm leading the commonwealth sorry that uh, that's happening but that's the way it is because i know it probably third best maybe compared to rich or something but um but i it, it i get i get a little stressed playing against the guys because you know you want to do well and you want to give the guys a good game and all that stuff but but it's fun. I'm I'm super happy I'm doing it. In fact, we played D Day last year, and this is what got me sunk in on GTS. Like I'm in, I'm in, I'm sold. So to me, right now, GTS. Someone asked last night, "What is your favorite system?" And I said, GTS and GCACW. Anyway, my point is, sitting there at dinner, I'm like, you know, I I just I can come into this playing with Jeff, just totally chill because we're working together, we're figuring it out. Sometimes Jeff will move a bunch of the Confederates, and I'll move the Union, or vice versa. And or like earlier in the morning or day morning hadn't been that long. I was like, I am not ready to play yet. So Jeff kind of did it. And I don't know. It's just, it's so much more relaxing. And we, I think the thing we could do probably is like, I me not advancing those Heinzelman guys in there. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, cool stuff. Yeah. We learned something new with each one of the scenarios we played. So we've had, we played four through Vassal. We sort of matched movements on one on tabletop about a year ago. And that was the most freaking fun and excitement that I've had in playing a game in a long time. Which is, it's just, it's nice. Any game you play where you can have the kind of discussions that we're having right now or that Todd and I have had, that's a good game. That's something, it's a good system and it's something you got to keep playing. And as far as him and his GTS being the favorite system, give it a year. We'll take the TS off of that G. And we'll put a BACW in there behind it. What? <laughs> we'll take the G and the T and then move the B over. <laughs> well, look, hey, it's uh, I, I got to go hit golf balls again tomorrow to recompense for the poor golf I played today. Uh, so uh, this was uh, this is all, man. Thank all you guys. And it, I got news for the numbers have gone up just sitting here chatting at the end. So yeah, I appreciate funny. all you guys coming on here. Patrick, you, you got to get on with us one night and just you don't you don't need to play you can sit there in a high chair above us and overrule what we're doing to help us get things straight but we'd love to have you in here doing this with us and anybody else man out there if you guys we are not opposed to getting people on here we had camp on with us last night we're going to do that again we're going to do i think we're going to do some civil war deep dive with him on another day but if you guys get the urge you want to get on here and and just tear it up with us in a chat uh, let us grill you a little bit. Hey, say something. We'll drag you in here. We've got a couple people we're working on right now we want to get on. But, uh, yeah, we're always available. And if, if I thought I could help you all with something and learning something, and look, Patrick allowed me for like three weekends to come and listen to him and Roger play uh, The Hood Strikes North just to sit there and listen. And all those nice little videos you see him putting out, I wish he'd put the full story out there one time so y'all can hear the cutting up they do in there and back and forth with each other because it's a it's a blast. So but hey, if we if I thought for a second we could help you in any way, shape, or form, we we'd be more than happy to. We really would. So or if you guys could help us, like tonight, big help. It's it's motivation. You wouldn't think you'd get that from a text window, but you do. So yeah. Yeah, you and I need to play against Patrick, see how that works out. Yeah. He has to play blindfolded one arm tied behind his back and, and, and dice that only have ones on it let's say d3 d3s versus our d6s <laughs> anyway cool stuff right. man yeah jeff's gotta go so yeah we're gonna kill it we'll talk to y'all later thanks for coming on everybody appreciate it have a good evening awesome see ya